Okay, here we are. It's Wednesday night. We're getting some drinks going. And as always, like two or three minutes before we started the stream, some weird shit happened. Yeah. Cops showed up. <laughs> Cops standing out there with a fucking gun and shit. I have no door to like, what's up? Like, Is your alarm uh, going off? And I was like, alarm? I don't have an alarm. And fucking, you know, he goes, you don't have an alarm? I says, yeah, nothing going on. I says, you can come in if you want. And I, I showed him. There's an alarm on the wall, but that alarm hasn't worked since we've been here. Yeah, we never we never activated it. Yeah. So he's like, they must have given me the wrong house number. I guess so. 6113, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure uh, yeah. we don't have an alarm. <laughs> we don't alarm. And, uh, you know, it's, and e even if we did, it still looks like, you know, even if we did have an alarm that we didn't know about, mm -hmm. um, you know, no nobody's in here but us. Right, just us. So. <laughs> We're almost never not in here. Maybe the uh, poltergeist set off an alarm. <laughs> they set for the cops. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, DJ Maniac said Tom talked too much shit on YouTube and the feds are after him. That's probably what you thought yeah. when you saw the cops, right? No, nah, he was, you, that you was thought local. The, you thought mm. they were coming to get you? Mm, local city cop. <laughs> no, uh -uh. That's really weird. All I yeah. heard, I heard somebody knocking at the door and I thought yeah. it was just like a package or something. And then like mm. I heard something about alarm, alarm. And I was just kind of like, what? What are you talking about? And then he was like, we don't have an alarm. I didn't know yeah. it was the cops. But yeah, uh, sorry. I'm just laughing at Sandra's screen name again. Sandra wonders if semen has healing properties. Wait, what? <laughs> That's their screen name? Yeah. <laughs> I know I didn't say anything like that. No, well, that was something that we were talking about on um, shit, man. What show was it that we were talking about that? Or somebody, I think it was on the Women in Mental Health show mm -hmm. where they thought that, uh, you know, women went crazy because, you know, if they had if they had sex with their husbands and they imparted their healing semen to them, then it would make them better. And if they didn't get that, then that made them crazy. So, you know. All right. <laughs> There's some other shit that was going on in the fucking fitness world I'm going to talk about now. Uh oh. Well, can I can I uh, just before we get too yeah. much into it? I'm not naming any names, but uh, you know how we've had like a bunch of stupid random ass like trolls around here. Seems yeah. like I think some of the maybe um, people that come here a lot like have been trolling under different names too, and I would really appreciate like you not doing that because okay. you right. know it's it's kind of not cool. And I think I know who it is. And, um, you know, yeah, and I just, well, it's like, you know, sometimes it's like we're doing a show. It's like we want to hang nice. out with you guys. It's like, you know, it's cool to have, like, conversations and stuff. But then yeah. if somebody's in there, like, incognito, like, under a different name, I don't know who the fuck that you are. Yeah. And, um, you know, and they're just coming in, like, saying crazy shit, like, trying to be funny or whatever. And I'm just kind of like. Yeah, I probably know who it is. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just don't have a lot of patience yeah, do for that kind um, of stuff. Anyway. And I want to and I want to give a shout out to uh, Michael E because he's here. Is he is he here, Michael? Mm -hmm. here? Well, wait a minute. Is it about that package? Yeah, yeah. Let's wait till more people show up. Then, talk, then show. All right, all right, all right. All right. We got it. We got it, Michael. We'll, we'll, we're going to show up later on because it's still kind of early on in the night. They had a dude who um, on the bodybuilding on, on the bodybuilding channels on YouTube. There's this dude who made a big name for himself. He was saying that. A human sperm was a performance enhancing drug if you drank it. And he was drinking this other dude's jizz. Yeah. The, the other dude was like on the Could other dude. Could it be that he just wanted to drink someone was, else's was, jizz and like wanted to come up jizz. with some justification for it? I'm not judging. Well he was saying I'm that, just saying. <laughs> saying that, that dude was that dude was fucking hulking out on steroids, so it would be like fucking you had I, you would have to be gay to fucking do that shit. You know what I mean? But he wasn't saying that, and and people were thinking that he was trolling, but he was just another kind of fitness dude, you know, gym gym rat dude. And he was saying he was doing he was trying to measure his gains. I think it was a troll. I well, think it, troll. it might just yeah. It's it's just somebody yeah. that is trying to make a name for themselves and like stand out by doing something so. like outrageous. Must have been. Must have been. Which. But they were Yum. trying to analyze, you know what I mean? Fucking, he was the talk of the town for a while. They haven't heard him talked about in the past couple months. But any anytime that dude would post a video, and fucking, you know, he would claim it was in it. He, he claimed he was drinking it. I don't don't think even, it, don't like yeah. describe it too much because I'm yeah. kind of like nauseated. <laughs> and <then> he's, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, and then he would fucking explain what it was doing, you know what I mean? And fucking how it was causing fucking like a hormonal feedback and stuff to get you to produce more testosterone it just 
It was just fucking funny, though. I didn't believe it. Well, I, I hope I, not, because that sounds like... Uh, well, he that's... might have been doing it. That... I... Well, yeah, I'm not... But I, I don't believe that, 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 that it was a performance-enhancing drug. I don't even know if I believe he was doing it. He was just kind of like making people believe that know. so many because so everybody because like I said that kind of shit goes viral because everybody's yeah. like look at this crazy shit. Yeah, I forgot dude's name. Somebody, some of you, some don't get don't encourage might know, him. Might know who that was. <laughs> don't give people like that attention. Yeah, it just encourages them to do stupider shit. There's enough stupidity yeah. in the world. We don't need more. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Oracle said years ago there was somebody who put together a cookbook called Cooking with Semen or something like that. Yeah, I've seen, um, I've seen, I don't know if there's a cookbook, but I know that there was kind of like a weird like mini trend or something. I don't know if it was a trend, but there's a couple people doing it where women were like eating their afterbirth Mm. or something. I don't remember something about that. It was a long time ago though. But it's like, like I said, it's always kind of one of those things that you know, the crazier something it is, something is, you know, the more the media is going to, cause it's like a crazy story and everybody's going to click on it. Right. But it's like, how many people are actually doing that? Probably not that many, but it's just kind of like, because the story gets picked up, it looks like, Ooh, it's this big trend. And I'm sure it's not, I'm sure it's just yeah. like one idiot, like doing it. And then, or maybe a couple idiots doing it. And then just like, everybody wants to report on it. Cause it's idiotic. <laughs> Granther's Hammer said, I'll have to tell uh, my wife about the positive attributes of drinking my spunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so gross. You find that shit on YouTube. <laughs> fucking it's, gross. I don't, oh. The dude was acting totally serious. But I, I, I think he was fucking bullshitting. But he, he had all these other bodybuilders talking about it, trying to disprove what he was saying. Hmm. Maybe, maybe we should do some stupid... Come up with like yeah. some really, really stupid thing. You see, Derek, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, he's he's like a fucking muscle nerd, and he knows all those drugs. He can tell you, he re- reads all the damn studies on them, how the endocrine system works. He'll fucking make a whole map of what does what, and fucking how testosterone aromatizes into estrogen, blah, 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 blah. He's not making it up. He's read all the stuff. You know, I mean, That's his fucking hobby. He's a, he's a damn muscle nerd. And he went through the science, and he's like, no, no, it couldn't be. You know, there's because even if there was even if there was something in there, they, 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 it would just be trace amounts. It would be it wouldn't be enough to make any difference. You wouldn't be able to measure any difference. Well, I mean, that should be obvious. You're right. Yeah. To anybody with the smallest modicum of scientific yeah. knowledge. Right. I mean, so seriously. there wouldn't be enough difference in there to make you. It wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to say uh, good luck, congratulations, whatever to Oracle about uh, she's talking about a job. Yeah. She's up for. So hopefully that goes the way you want it to go. Uh, Mark Navarro says you have to eat your own poop to get all the nutrients. That's why cows have four stomachs. <laughs> Hitler was eating shit. You guys know that? <laughs> that sounds like something he would do. But he, I, he didn't know he was eating shit though. He had a doctor. <laughs> he had a doctor who was a fucking quack. All right, and his name was Morel. And Morel was a real famous syphilis doctor, so, which is kind of strange because it kind of it kind of goes into with the, with the rumor that Hitler had syphilis, which he, he had a lot of symptoms of fucking late stage syphilis, syphilis in remission. But this guy was giving him something called Vitamultin B. All right, Morel would just keep him fucking jacked up on all kinds of drugs, especially towards the last few years of his life. But he was giving him this fucking concoction he was making called Vitamultin B, and it was in a little wrapper. You had to unwrap it. He had it all wrapped in gold foil leaf, especially for Adolf Hitler and shit. And he'd Ooh. unwrap it, and it'd be like a little pellet that he'd made. And that was wrapped in fucking... <laughs> and, it, and it was it was methamphetamine, some fucking herbs, and some special shit from... Special human shit from some peasants over in... <clears throat> fucking hungary or something that were eating something that this dr morell thought was therapeutic he had some of that some of those people shit in it or therapeutic therapeutic yeah <laughs> Hitler was eating it you know you making and there's me, a lot of crazy shit there's you're making of, me gag yeah there's a lot of cra- there's over the years there's been a lot of crazy accusations of stories made up about things that happened over there, fucking, you know, with old in 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 the Third Reich, shit with old old mustache man, but uh, a lot of it was fucking bullshit that came up after the war. But no, there that was true, and that was some there was some weird shit that they did. 
you know. They, a lot of them were drug addicks. A lot of people don't know that. Well, like a kind of, of in, in a lot of ways, it's funny they're talking about the good old days. But a lot yeah. of well, it, it was it was almost like more acceptable to be a drug addict yeah. back then because a lot of them were legal. Yeah. Sandra said, "Isn't there a coffee thing that comes out of cat poop?" There is. Yeah. Um, there's this kind of like gourmet. Is it a civet cat? I want to say, um, or something. That yeah, comes... they made coffee out of some cat shit. Remember that? That was like super fan. I don't know if that was might have been like a. a I think you're right. I think it was a civet cat. I it think was it was some seeds that they eat. Yeah. They eat some seeds and shit it out. Something like that. And it doesn't, di- the, the, the the digestive tract doesn't destroy the seed. Yeah. It weakens it or something. And you can now take that seed and, 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 and wash it off. And they collect all the shit out of this fucking civet cat shit. And they wash those seeds off and sell them to make coffee. with. It's like a real expensive gourmet coffee. I remember That's got to that. be some real good coffee. I, I can't imagine... Yeah. Um, how good that coffee would be to one for me to pay that much money yeah. for it, which I can't afford, and two just think that it came out of a cat's bottle. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Uh, Oracle said there is such a thing as a fecal transplant. Yes, that's true. Uh, if you don't have the right uh, flora and stuff in your intestines and it's causing you problems or illnesses, they can actually implant like other uh, poop molecules into your intestines, like to kind of get your own floral up. I don't think they make you eat it though, unless they put it in a capsule form. I think they just kind of like, I don't know if they stick it up your butt. I'm not really sure how they do it. My sister would probably know. She used to, she used to work billing at a GI clinic. (laughs) So she has all kind of fun stories. She doesn't anymore, but she used to. (laughs) So she's got all the poop stories and all the like funny shit stuck up people's butts stories. Uh, must be a sidetrack show if we're talking about eating poop. It's a, you know what I mean? It seems like this is kind of the topic that we would wander into later when we were kind of like slightly hammered, but it's like, no, man. We haven't, we haven't been on for like 15 minutes and we're already talking about poop. They also make perfume with skunk pee. Yes, they do. Um, yeah, they make all kind of like... Honestly, I think... Um, I read a couple books about perfumery and about like them making perfume and stuff. (laughs) There are actually like a lot of things that are made with like really, really gross. Like a lot of perfume ingredients that are made with really gross pee and poop and various other kinds of things. (laughs) They're laughing that they said he laughed when I said that Hitler ate shit. He did. He he probably didn't know though. Dr. Morell knew. But he wasn't trying to fuck with him. It was, Morell was a fucking quack. He was a fucking quack. He did all kinds of shit. Uh, the reason why I mentioned him is that there was some programs about that, and there was even a whole book written about Morell and how Morell may have partially been an, a contributing factor to to the Final Solution, or you know, or or the Holocaust, because that shit. Morell was keeping him just loaded up with all kinds of fucking methamphetamine. And a bunch of opiates, too. Get, they were giving him morphine all the time. They'd knock him out with morphine, and in the morning, they'd wake him up with methamphetamine. And then he had real bad constipation. You know, Hitler couldn't take a shit. So then they'd give him all kinds of weird laxatives. And he was a vegetarian, which made it worse. So he had real fucking bad gas. He had real bad teeth. A lot of people don't realize that the Fuhrer fucking has terrible teeth. And... Um, for some reason, it makes yeah. me really, really happy to think that that stupid motherfucker was just like sitting around the toilet all yeah. the time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like suffering. It was I'm most, like good. <laughs> it was mostly the last like two years. Still, that's good. That's a the long last time. Two years. Suffer, bitch. He went. He went crazy. I think um, when uh, he went fucking crazy, he lost to the German army over the Battle of Stalingrad. Operation Barbarossa fucking failed. He fucking, over a million men got fucking killed up there and never came back. And they said he was never really the same after that. He was, you know, two years, you know, spent the second or the last two years of his life just totally doped up. And fucking, he was either knocked out on morphine or he was just in this total manic state because they were just giving him a lot of methamphetamine. He wasn't making a whole lot of sense. And... He had tertiary fucking syphilis in remission. Once once he made his mind up to do something, he couldn't change his mind. And that's 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 the symptoms of syphilis in remission, uh, which is they're kind of robotic and lizard-like. Once they come to a conclusion, they can't reverse a decision. You know, you, you'll run into people like that sometimes. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have that, but it's one of the symptoms of probably what was wrong with them. But 
So really, medical the way the way he's being treated me- medically could have affected a lot of what happened in Germany. I mean, um, you know, the high command was fucked up too. Um, they were they they were all in a big damn circle jerk. Those guys, they couldn't back off of anything. They didn't want to look like a pussy, and there's a lot of peer pressure and shit going on between them. A lot of and there was a lot of backstabby. They were catty bitches, making yeah. fun of each other and shit all the time. And big time, yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, that's kind of the thing. It's like I totally. I was gonna say something, and I totally forgot what it was. Oh well. Um. <laughs> there was a, a group synergy between people can become very dangerous. Yeah, uh, Hugo asked, "Do you think Hitler really committed suicide?" Um. Well, I I, I know a lot about it. Um. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Probably. He wasn't the kind of guy to be taken alive. He knew what happened to Mussolini. He wasn't going to let that happen to himself. And uh, he was so pig-headed, really, and strong-willed, he couldn't retreat. He had to kill himself, and which was common in, in the German military anyway. A lot of the generals did kill themselves. Um, if they were lost a battle down in the Eastern Front and all hope is lost and they felt like, you know... They were kind of like the Japanese committing harakiri. They were they were like that. They were like, oh, I failed at my duty. Bam! Didn't, didn't want to lose his face. Yeah, they were like that. Yeah, I could see that. But uh, no, what I was gonna say Plus, was that. Well, here's something else though. There's another big contributing factor that here in the comfortable West, you don't fucking read into it. This war was in the end happening inside of Germany. Germany was just being fucking destroyed. Parts of it look like the damn surface of the moon. From the point of view of your average German citizen, it was the apocalypse. There wasn't wasn't a future, and they were going fucking crazy. Old people were committing suicides, jumping off of bridges. The Russian army was coming. Russia raped its way right through fucking Germany and into Berlin. Even the Germans, after the war, kept it quiet. How many women were raped and murdered? They raped and murdered. The, the Russian army was fucking absolutely brutal. There were Russian females with the Russian army. Some of them came back and said, "This is an this is a, an entire army of rapists." I said uh, now some of the some of the Russian women just laughed. They thought they thought they deserved it. They didn't like the Germans. They didn't show any mercy for them. But they were raping children from eight to eighty. I mean, just little kids all the way up to old women. Oh, uh, the American army would find big piles of dead women, German women. Uh, a bunch of weird shit happened that never got released to the public like German Wehrmacht soldiers would try to surrender to the U.S. Army and they'd surrender to them but then they'd go look take all this weapons and all this material that we have go out there and kill some kill some more Russians for us and then come back in and surrender they'd show them pictures of all those fucking dead German women and stuff they'd go, ahead and go kill those guys so we were sending the German army back out there to kill Russians for what they were doing to the German women it was, they, you know, so from the point of view of a German at that time, if you were in the military, a lot of them just killed themselves when they failed. I mean, the whole world was being destroyed from their point of view. It was like the end of the world. It was just, it all came crashing down in a matter of a few weeks. So it was real shocking to them. Yeah, Esther said they're still under tornado warning due to the remnants of Hurricane Ida. Hopefully everything's okay over there because like i said bad enough that it's like fucking hurricanes and floods and shit like that but then you got to worry about fucking tornadoes okay what the fuck go away motherfucker <laughs> what was that oh i don't know so are we getting more uh, trolls and shit yeah i'm just you know yeah I don't know if people weren't here earlier i'm just kind of like i know like we get like stupid uh random ass trolls but I know that some people that hang out here a lot uh, have also taken to perhaps putting on little different names and yeah, don't trolling do that. under that name and yeah. seriously cut that shit out. <laughs> it's yeah. like I don't I don't need to like worry about it. It's a guy, it's bad enough having to worry about fucking random ass trolls. Yeah. <laughs> than having to worry about like people that hang out here all the time trying to be funny or whatever. But you know, that's kind of what that's all about. So so can I show this now? Can I show Michael's thing yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so we don't, we're not doing unboxing because I opened it yesterday. But we got this yesterday 
uh, after we did the stream. Do you want to read this little? I'm going to read this a little yeah. letter. So um, he says, this is from Michael E., by the way. He was uh, just here in the chat a minute ago. He's probably still here. Thanks for reviewing the Hatchet series. Perfect timing since Kane Hodder was at a convention in Detroit last week, uh, bought this figure, and had Kane sign it for you two. Hope you enjoy it. My wife wasn't too happy we weren't keeping it. <laughs> well, thank you very much for sending it to us. This is so rad. Check this out. Check out how awesome this is. You guys, you guys, you guys. Look! Yeah. Ah, look how awesome that is. And look, he has like different little hands and stuff. Yeah, and it was autographed by a dude. Yeah, and like yeah. Kane Hodder autographed it. Isn't yeah. that awesome? Thank you so much, Michael. I was like so excited when I opened the box. Show him the photograph. And look, he's just like, okay, so here's the picture. Uh, and there's there's little Kane Hodder right yep. there. In so his little, his little shirt that says, give violence a chance, which I thought was very funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, and look, if you look up here, if you look up here, next to Kane Hodder was, that was Michael Berryman's uh, thing right there. So that's kind of cool. He was there as well. So I guess that was a recent convention. So thank you very much, Michael. That's much appreciated. It's very, very cool. Yeah, I love shit like that. But uh, yeah, that's a really good figure. I don't think I'd actually seen that. Esther sent us, oh, and thank you very much, Esther. $50. No way. It was the 45th anniversary of Carrie. Thank you very much, baby. Aw, thank you so much, Esther. Yeah. That's why Shudder just added Carrie today. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually, they added, ooh, you know what they added? They added Carrie. They added Poltergeist. They added The Haunting from 1963, which I was super excited about because I love that movie. Um, they added a bunch of old ones, which I thought was really cool. So maybe we should, maybe we should do... Uh, um, do a, what you call it? Do a matinee on Carrie, like on Sunday or something. We didn't like we do that. that already. We I don't think we've done Carrie to be honest with you. You gotta check it. Um, I mean I'm pretty sure we haven't. Although God, we've done so many movies. Maybe we did. It's really hard for me to remember. <laughs> it's gotten to the point now. I think we well, did. it's funny because I think that in the chat. Um, it was either on Friday or last Wednesday. I think it was Louie, and he said, um, you should do a show about the flat tire murders because they happen here in Florida. And just randomly, when I was looking at our channel, we already talked about that. We did it, but it wasn't its own show. We did a show about, like, Florida crimes, and we talked about the flat tire murders in there, and I had totally forgotten that we did that. So, yeah, we already did that. I don't remember which, um, which episode it was, but it was a while back. Uh, Legend of Hell House. We definitely did Legend of Hell House. That was actually... Legend of Hell House, I think, was maybe only the second or third movie we, re we reviewed. Like, when we first started doing the movie reviews, I'm pretty sure. I think the first one we did was The Thing. Um, and then Legend of Hell House was maybe second or third. And then Logan's Run was one of the first ones. The Hunger was one of the first ones. We just... God, man, we just have so many that we still have to do. Every time I fucking look at the list, I'm just gonna, like... God, I can't believe we haven't done that fucking movie yet. It's just like, it's hard. And it's, just, and it's just like every year that goes by, like new movies are coming out and I've got to talk about those as well. And it's just kind of like, holy crap. Which version of Carrie? The original one. Um, I didn't yes. actually, what? Yeah, I was saying that's really the only one. Although the remake wasn't that bad. It's it was, just, it was all right. It's all right. The, the, but no, the original is the one that you want to see. Um, I mean, generally, I don't know. Yeah, Oracle says, I mean, you could go to all the Dominic Noble and compare the book to the two movie versions. Yeah. Um, oh, he just put up one, or actually maybe it's because I'm on his Patreon. He just put up one of um, Watership Down. So I still have to watch that one because I had just, I even voted in the poll because he has a poll like before he does. If you don't know who Dominic Noble is, he has like a channel on YouTube and he does various things, but he usually does, he does a show called Lost in Adaptation where he goes like, he does a deep dive like comparing uh, the movie version to the book version and it's like really he spends like a lot of time doing them and uh, he had done he was even doing like all the um, what do you call them it's the fucking line the witch in the word chronicles of Narnia yeah he did all those uh, and shit like that so that was like pretty funny but yeah he does a poll and he wants to know how many people have just read the book how many people have just seen the movie how many people you know have read the book and the movie or haven't done either one so he knows like how much information to impart about each thing watership down i read the book when i was in elementary late elementary school or early junior high i think i'd seen the movie first because you know anybody that grew up in like the late 70s or early 80s probably saw watership down and was like 
traumatized for life because oh it's a cartoon about bunny rabbits oh my god bobby it's like you know what i mean it's like it's horrifying so um you know and uh you know so I, i'm so i gotta watch that at some point they there was the plague dogs too which i don't think i've seen but it's on tubi and it's on my list to watch because i want to watch that as well but i saw watership down a bunch of times did you ever see it yeah yeah i saw it in the theater when i was a kid watership down mm-hmm. it's just like it's one of those it's one of those little british cartoon about the bunny rabbits yeah it's good about all the scared the shit out of me yeah i think it, like i said i think it scared the shit out of every kid that yeah. saw it <laughs> spiritual bunny rabbits you know talking about the, the the rabbit god and rabbit jesus and shit remember that yeah it had it had religious elements to it i haven't seen it in a long time i just yeah. remember like all the rab like that horrible scene with like all the rabbits like dying and screaming yeah. in pain and all the blood like coming down the field and shit like that from what i remember the rabbits had a had a religion they believed in god but it was like a rabbit god and stories about it about what the about the ra don't you don't remember that yeah i remember yeah I, it's been a long time since a long i've time seen it i don't remember all the details and I haven't read the book since right. I was a kid, but you know, I don't know Excuse if they me. called him the Great Rabbit or something, but they they uh, they mentioned him every now and then. I think it starts off with like a a story about the Rabbit God, doesn't it? I don't like like I said, I haven't seen okay. it in a long time, yeah. so I don't remember. I think it does. I mean, like I said, I was I have it because um, Dominic Noble did a review, did a thing on it, and I have it like saved, but I just haven't had a chance to watch. It's a good it story. Yet. Yeah, it from is. My, from what I remember. And I remember really liking the book as well. I liked, there was, you know, I like that in the 70s and 80s, it was kind of like a thing of animated movies that were uh, kind of meant for children, but were also sort of like really well uh, soul they, crushing. They, they <laughs> pretended to be for children. Yeah. They weren't really. They were for adults. Yeah. But I mean, um, I'm not talking about heavy metal. That was obviously yeah. for adults. I'm talking about shit like that was supposedly for children stuff like, uh, for example, like the Brave Little Toaster. But then it had like these really like horrific, like all this horrific imagery in it. Yeah. And uh, you know, kids saw it and were like, "What the fuck?" And it like scared the crap out of well, them. Well, you yeah. had Fire and Ice, and you had a bunch of them that they had one. I think it was called Wizards. Um. Yeah, remember Wizards? Uh, we yeah. Then they had oh, one, the French one, about the human, about the about the the aliens that captured all the humans and kept them as pets. What was that called? What you doing? I'm um, I'm just okay. I'm typing back. Maybe you guys might remember which one. What's it called? Fantastic Voyage? No. Was it called Fantastic Voyage? I think it might have been called Fantastic Voyage. I don't remember that one so good. Yeah, that's about a guy and he's being. He's born and raised as a pet to these aliens. Fantastic okay. Planet, DJ. Fantastic Maniac Planet. Says. That's what it was called. Yeah, that was weird. I got to see that one again. I haven't seen that one in a long time. That was another one that scared me as a kid. It was, it was French. Yeah. It was in English. There was a German one called Felidae. Yeah, about the cats. About the cats. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that wasn't really uh, for kids either. It was about a serial killer, wasn't it? Serial I killer think cat? It, uh, yeah, I think it was. And there was like cat sex and all kind of gore and shit like that in it. Yeah, and the Humane Society was killing all the cats and that was freaking them out. It was like the cat concentration cat. Yeah, it was like, yeah. it was fucked up. Um, I was going to say too, I might have brought this up before. Uh, and I remember writing a, like, Hey, you knocked Spock over. He's gonna kick your ass. He's Spock? you knocked Spock over. He's oh, gonna. Oh shit, man, that's the ghost, man. No, that was you. Just vacuum. He's gonna get his agonizer out yeah. and fuck you up while you're not looking. Mr. He's Ross. Gonna... He's gonna hand me your agonizer. Your agonizer, please. He's gonna sneak up behind it. I'm not gonna say a damn word. He's gonna sneak up behind it. He's gonna go. <laughs> How funny would that be? But yeah, so I had written a blog post about this when I was a kid. I saw this cartoon that was like Jack and the Beanstalk, right? Uh, but it was like super fucking trippy. There was like a little mechanical witch in it named Madame Hecuba. There was like a giant that had boxer shorts with hearts on it whose name was Tulip. Yeah, his name was Tulip. And it had like music in it. You know what I mean? And it's like, so the witch was keeping this little princess with pointy hair, was keeping her prisoner, but was keeping her like drugged up and was like, um, she was supposed to marry the giant. And like the princess was all, yeah, I suppose so. Cause she was all like drugged up and everything. And it had some like really like freaky like sequences in it. Like especially the one part like at the wedding at the end, like the witch 
she had like cut out all of these paper people like to be guests at the wedding because nobody else lived on this like cloud city place whatever it was and then she like animated them and it was just like this really creepy song and it was just like this really cool creepy um cartoon and i saw it when i was a kid on cable probably like in i don't know 1979 1980 something like that and then i didn't see it for a really long time and then i thought um you know, since I didn't see it for a long time and I kept like asking people about it. Hey, did you ever see this like Jack and the Beanstalk? And it was like this crazy with a little mechanical witch. And they were like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? And so for a while, I thought maybe I just dreamed it. Um, but, then, but then I ended up coming across it on YouTube. And actually, I didn't know this when I was growing up, but it was actually Japanese. It was like a um, it was a Japanese version of Jack and the Beanstalk. And they were trying to make something that was sort of like approximating a Disney movie. Um, but of course, since it was Japan, it came out kind of like strange, but in a good way. Cause I, but I just like really, really liked it. And so I rewatched it again, like recently. And I'm just like, yep, that's just as weird as I remembered. Also, if you guys haven't seen another animated movie called Rock and Rule, I think I probably brought that one up too. That's Canadian, I believe. Um, I think Nelvana made it was the name of the uh, studio. And that one was actually really, really awesome. And it even had like great fucking music. Like it had fucking Debbie Harry and Iggy Pop and Lou Reed and Cheap Trick and shit like that. But it was just like, it was like a post-apocalyptic, like it was a bunch of like people that had evolved from rats, but it was about, but it wasn't really about that. It was about like a rock band. And then it was about this rock star named Mock, the magic man. And he was like, trying to find um the this a person with a voice that would open up like a dimension like open up a door to another dimension like an evil dimension so he could have all the power on earth or something but that's also really good and that might be on youtube too because i think i watched that too not too long ago for free sandra said i loved the last unicorn as a child yeah i liked that too that was like i remember that being kind of messed up too was it not didn't didn't mia pharaoh do the voice of the unicorn. Am I remembering that wrong? I'm pretty sure that was Mia Farrow's voice. I remember something kind of fucked up happening in that, but I can't remember what it was. What movie are you talking about? The Last Unicorn. And I think that was from a book because I think I read the book as well, like when I was a kid. Now I'm I trying to... Another one that I really liked from back then was um, The Secret of Nim about the mice and the, the mice and like the super intelligent rats. And that, and the rats were like helping the little mouse, like help, like move her little house so that the plow didn't kill her and her family. I don't remember that one. Yeah. That was, um, what's his fucking name? Somebody, I'm sure somebody in the comments knows. Don Bluth. I think that was Don Bluth. And I read the book too, but the book is called Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats, Rats of Nim. But that was like a good story too. And I think that's actually on YouTube for free. Like, you know how YouTube has movies and you can watch movies for free, like on there? Um, yeah, I think it's on there. Not like people that have just uploaded it, but it's just on there like officially. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, DJ Maniac said, I saw it on Night Flight when I was a kid. Which one? Uh, Fantastic Planet? Yeah, maybe. All right. Yeah, so I don't remember if I ever saw that one. Although now, now I'm kind of like curious about it because now I kind of want to see it to see if I've seen it before. I've probably seen it. But it was in English. You said it's not, it wasn't in... What? Fantastic Planet. It was in English, but I think it was dubbed into English. I mean, you couldn't tell. It was animated. Yeah. I think it was originally in French, hmm. but then there's the English versions of it. Interesting. It was good. Very two-dimensional. It was like cutouts. R real odd shit. Oh, yeah. Cool. It kind of looked like the animated sequences from... Um, um, what was that British... What was that British um, comedy series that had all those? What, Monty Python? Monty Python, yeah. Man, remember how Monty Python had these little animated sequences in between yeah. skits? Weird shit. It looked like that. Oh, okay. of, that's I how see. I remembered it. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Fantastic Planet. Okay, well, that's one. I'm going to have to write that down because now I kind of want to see yeah. it. It was I, I might have seen it. I just don't remember. Let me put that over there because it's like kind of under my whatever so i'm gonna write that right over here because otherwise i'll forget because everybody just gives me good recommendations EJ maniac says yeah fantastic planet i have a copy on vhs wow yeah yeah watership down that's yeah. how we kind of got it started talking about yeah. 
talking about Hugo this. Hugo said Fantastic Planet is in French. Yeah, but I saw... The, you, you saw a dubbed English version. I saw version. a dub, dubbed English version, yeah. Yeah. It's in English. I'm trying to think of like some other, some other good shit from back then. 70s had a lot of good animated stuff. It did, and the 80s did too, mm -hmm. like early 80s. I was telling him about that weird ass um, Jack and the Beanstalk that I you, saw when I was a kid that I found out much later was Japanese but I didn't realize because that was also dubbed into English if you guys haven't seen um, Fire and Ice you want to check that out kind of like a Conan type story <clears throat> that one and the and the original um, uh, Lord of the Rings not the, the animated Lord of the yeah. Rings it's pretty good I liked you know what I liked the animated Hobbit better yeah. than I liked the animated Lord of the Rings. Is that weird to say? I liked them both. Uh, they were different at art styles. Yeah. Lord of the Rings was kind of like fire and ice. It, it was, I think, rotoscope. It was done over actual yeah. film. Looked pretty cool. Um, you know, just... See what I was going to say. I was going to say something about one of them. Fire and Ice was pretty good because it was kind of like a Conan story, but... Conan was a was a prop was was an owned property, so they couldn't use that. They're like, um, well, we need another muscle bound barbarian fellow. We just can't call him that. Well, they had two. Remember? Yeah. They had, it was they had, well. What was his name? Wolf Killer. I think it was his name. Yeah. Yeah. What was his name yeah. Wolf Killer? He, we just watched that not too long because yeah. we did a review of it. Yeah. He right? was kind of like Conan. The thing is, is that in, there's a bunch of documentaries on that Blu-ray that that. That, I think it was Louie that sent that to me. I don't remember who sent it to me. Then you guys sent us so many stuff. I can't keep it. I can't keep it straight. Who sent what? But um, in the in the documentaries about it, they say they, they tell you what the original script was, and I wish they would have gone with the original script, where it turned out that Wolf Killer was actually the dad of the bad guy. Yeah, that I think made we, a lot more I sense. think we talked about that yeah. when we when we did the review of it. They should not have how should, that made how that would have tied the story together. It was yeah, it tied the story together and it was like on a Star Wars level of, you know what I mean? No, I am your father. It was no! like that kind of No, you know, it's like that. <laughs> you find out where these the wolf killer is trying to kill his dude and he's his son, you know. His it, it was kind of like his an abomination son, you know what I mean? Cuz there was I guess there was and, and then there was some like incest going on between his son and, and the mom, the baby mom. It's some weird shit. It's kind of like that's some dirty, dirty family. <laughs> well, kind of like <laughs> kind of like in in uh, in Excalibur. You know what was his name? Mordred. Yeah. Mordred and his mom. What was the mom's name? It was uh, fucking Arthur's uh, Arthur's sister. She ended up turning into who? Morgan Le Fay. Was it Morgan? No, no. What, was it? Sister. I can't. Might have been. I'm like I'm so sleepy. It's like yeah. I can't even. My brain's like really sluggish. <laughs> she ended up becoming a sorceress. Man, I wish yeah. I could be a sorceress. That'd be so rad. Lily says, "Jenny, you look gorgeous." By the way, thank you. You have perfect skin. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. It's not though. I just put like makeup over it. No, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one thing I got lucky with. Uh, Dermot says, When the Wind Blows was definitely not for kids. That is um, another one that's on my list that I'm going to do on my Flickers Affair show because I had not heard of that one until I was doing the research for Threads, uh, you know, that nuclear war thing. And a bunch of people in the comments, like when I was reading like about Threads, they were talking about When the Wind Blows. And that's like an animated nuclear war <laughs> type, yeah. of, uh, type of thing. Like, this is what happens when the fucking... Because, man... I don't know. Is it is it a bigger bummer than Threads? Because, man, Threads is like, that was one of the most depressing fucking things I've ever seen. Like, you know what I mean? Seriously. That was a really, really depressing movie. Way worse than... What was the one that they had over here the day after? Do you remember that one? It came mm. out in 83. Sounds it, familiar. It was just like showing everybody... They showed it on network TV, but it was just kind of like they were trying to show everybody like what it would be like if there was like really a nuclear war. And um, I remember everybody was talking about it in school the next day. I think I was in... Eighth grade, ninth grade, some, or no, no, I was only in third or fourth grade at that point. Um, yeah, so everybody was talking about the next day, and it's like we were talking about how fucked up it was. But then um, people were like, "Yeah, that's nothing. Watch the British one, Threads," and it's like I watched it, and wow, that's way worse. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, that was really, um, yeah, you really like the whole nuclear war 
thing, man, was a. Uh, I mean, of course, you don't. Nobody wants a nuclear war, but there there was a lot of fucking psychological operations going on. I read, read a really good book called The Future of Warfare, and it was written by a guy who was a damn <clears throat> big fucking uh, arms dealer. Worked for Raytheon and um, some of the companies that made all the nuclear weapons. And he ended up working for Jane's Defense Weekly, and that's where the nations buy their weapons through Jane's Defense, or you know, they fucking Raytheon, fucking and McDonnell Douglas ads all through it. And it was some funny shit that the U that the U.S. military did, and the CIA. They hyped up. They knew that the Soviets did not have very much money. So when it came to nuclear research, they had just enough money to build their weapons and get their military built up, but they didn't really have the money to spend on shit like damage analysis and research and what, how long the fallout lasts and what would be the ecological, you know, damage of having a nuclear exchange. They knew that they were getting it from us. They had spies in our system sending the data back. So everything that we said, we exaggerated by about 10 times. And the idea was to fucking feed the Soviets a, a, a bad or, or an unrealistic image of what a nuclear war would have actually done. And, and then what a nuclear war would have actually looked like. How many, how many weapons would have been exchanged and everything before, before politics would have took over, you know. Now, at certain times, you know, I think back in the 60s, you know, the Dr. Strangelove era, they probably just would have fucking wiped each other out. But by the time the 70s and the 80s rolled around, neither side wanted that fight. So we were psyching the Russians out with all these fucking doomsday scenarios. And we did it by making movies and shit like that. And the American public bought it. You get used, we were using the American public to scare the shit out of the Russians. The chances of there, even if a nuclear war had happened, by the time the 70s had rolled around, it would have only probably been a couple of them. And, man, we were setting off nuclear weapons all the time above ground. It didn't have a huge impact. Yeah, some people died, but it, not enough to make a difference in the, long, in, in, in the big, in the big uh, picture of things. I think they set off a couple hundred of those nuclear weapons above ground by the time they banned nuclear testing above ground. It wouldn't have made a big difference. It's funny. Well, you know, still not good. And they no, still not made, good. yeah, not still good. made movies out of it. Well, they, yeah, and, you know, they were doing things like they were making the they were making the the bombs a lot smaller. They're making them tactical. And there was a lot of secrets, a lot of nuclear secrets. One of the big nuclear secrets, you know, the guy from Jane's Defense talked about it is how ineffective they were. I mean, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were made out of wooden paper, and bombed both of them. And within a few weeks, they were both those cities were functioning cities again. A couple weeks later, it didn't do that much damage. Had you would uh, had you dropped that on a stone city somewhere in Europe, it would it would have done a fraction of the damage that you saw. It just all the damage was concentrated at around ground zero. Everything else was just blast damage, and it wasn't that impressive. But psychologically, it was very impressive. You know what I mean? It was. Just regular conventional bombing missions were worse, much worse, because it was spread out over a larger area. They were secretly working on shit like cluster munitions, MIRVs, and uh, wet nuclear clustered munitions that drop off mini warheads in an area so you could get into every little nook and cranny. But still, you're destroying a city. It's mostly civilians. What the fuck would you want to do that for? You know what I mean? You don't really win a war that way. Because you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it was World War II thinking, you know? And we weren't bombing cities in World War II to win the war anyway. They were trying to find factories because we'd already bombed the factories. They took the factories apart and moved them into people's houses, and people were working at home to make weaponry. You know? <laughs> or they were also flying up so high you could hit a factory anyway. They'd all just fucking spill into the fucking neighborhoods anyway. So... Yeah, you could drop a nuclear bomb in there and fucking maybe destroy a factory, but that's because they didn't have guidance, you know? It went over to this laser-guided and GPS-guided so much better, you know? 
You can yeah, hit a target. Like, Ooh, bombs away. We don't even know. Don't know where it's hidden. We don't know where we're yeah. aiming at. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> carpet bombing. Whatever. Carpet bombing and nuclear bombs, nuclear weapons were trying to compensate for lack of accuracy. That's really all it was. Well, it only has to be close. <laughs> you know, if it lands within a couple of miles, it'll it'll destroy the factory. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. That's, but That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> you know, conven- uh, it, it's part of conventional warfare, and conventional warfare doesn't achieve anything, really. Just look at Afghanistan. Nothing was achieved. Yeah, Fourth Throwdown said, uh, yeah, the idea that both sides would just fire off everything was rather unrealistic. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened. Remember, I and I actually, I think I put this movie in uh, the poll for next week, uh, War Games. Remember that one with, uh, what's his name? Matthew Broderick, where he was like a computer hacker who somehow how they hacked into NORAD. Yeah. And then it accidentally, <laughs> accidentally started off World War Three. Yeah. As one does with her fucking Apple IIe. But, yeah. you know, we were like worried about that shit back then. The most likely scenario was an accident. In other words, launching something off by accident. Yeah. That was more likely. Which is kind of what this was. Right. And if you just accidentally launched one and it landed somewhere in the United States, the U.S. would probably accept that, that it was an accident. Because if it was on purpose, they would have sent a bunch of them. Yeah. And they probably wouldn't have responded. They would have wanted a bunch of sanctions and reparations and they'd have to fucking sign all kinds of treaties. Another likely one is that maybe they probably would have used a nuclear weapon on something like an aircraft battle carrier group, something like that, out in the ocean. You could get away with that. Yeah. Because that's a military target. You know, your aircraft carrier was over here. Fuck your aircraft carrier. Boom. Fuck your aircraft carrier. Now what are you going to (laughs) do? Well, that's a big difference between, you know, between launching one on on a city. You know what I mean? Your Navy's like, yeah, we weren't supposed to be there. Let's not launch on them because then they'll launch on us. Okay, you got us. We weren't supposed to be there. That's probably what would have happened. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> don't get, don't bring your aircraft carrier over here. We'll do it again. That kind of shit. It You'll get been, more of the same. It would have been what they call a limited exchange. They would have purposely shot at shit where it wasn't worth it to respond to because you know what I mean. It. Both sides were trying to de-escalate. They didn't want it to escalate to where you're striking cities in people's homes, in people's homelands. And blowing up a city doesn't achieve much. It's not a military target. It just makes them matter. Ask the British. The Germans bombed London, and the British, what happened? The British got pissed off. That's all. They got British got pissed off. They fought harder. Well, yeah. I mean, that's all that happens. It's like, hey, that's our cities you're fucking yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, you're... Well, we got to live there and stuff. Yeah, you're dropping them things on fucking innocent women and children. That was a big mistake that the Germans did. They should have never... They should have left England alone. France, I can understand, but there was no reason to even fuck with England. England wouldn't have really gotten involved, I don't think, if it wasn't for that bomb in London. Yeah, well... But they just weren't thinking clearly. They were thinking too hard. That's thinking what kind of... too much. That's kind of what I don't. Well, I don't even know if it was that. Well, like you said, you would, we're kind of going back to what you were saying before about them being on like all these fucking drugs and everything. Not at that point of the war. That that was early in the war. Although I do kind of feel like, well, I think that's what I was going to say like a long time ago that I forgot about when we were talking about that about Hitler being on those drugs and stuff. And I was going to say that it was almost kind of like more acceptable back then to be on a bunch of that stuff. Cause a lot of that shit, like, you know, uppers and stuff like that were legal. Right. And they, you know yeah. what I mean? So a lot of people were taking them. Yeah. There weren't any stigma about drugs. So there wasn't any stigma no. about it. And honestly, like the more I read about that time period, I'm like, how did those people live even as long as they lived? Shit, man. I have like a couple too many drinks and I got to sleep for two days. I don't yeah. like understand how people can be like 50 years old and be like, okay, here's the uppers and now here's the downers and yeah. here's this and that. And it's holy crap, man. I just, I don't understand how they can fucking, they must have like a much more hardy constitution than I have. That's for sure. <laughs> In the first half of the 1900s, if it felt good, then it was good. If you took a drug and it made you feel good, then shit, that must be good for you. That's just the thinking at the time. <laughs> The idea that it could catch up to you, they didn't really think of it that way. Yeah, they didn't really seem to, did they? No. That's uh, that's interesting. And that's probably why. Just because, yeah. well, it can't be bad. It it's making bad. me feel awesome. Yeah. 
you know, there, there's no way this could just be building up in my system and then just like have diminishing returns and be like fucking up all my organs. Well, it was like in the 70s with Arnold and all those guys down at Gold Gym. I mean, they're fucking popping Anavar pills like there's no tomorrow and doing doing anabolic steroids and eating and getting huge. How could this not be healthy? Yeah. You know, look how strong I am. How could that not be healthy? You know, and they lived a long time. They're still alive. A lot of them. Yeah, it's well... It's just a lot of stress on your heart, your internal organs, you know? Yeah, and like I said, time. it wasn't really anything they do. You know, and it's like, kind of like... I don't really think that... No, they didn't really seem to understand, like, moderation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or it wasn't like a widespread type of, like... if You know, if it makes you feel good, or if a little bit of it is good for you, then obviously more of it is even, Be better. even better. And it just okay. really did seem that that seemed like a... Like, kind of a mindset that a lot of people had. All right, well, the thing with steroids... It made sense if you were there at the time. They were injecting vitamins first and vi injecting vitamins was a thing out of the cattle industry and they would inject vitamins and I don't remember which one it was vitamin D I think you get that from the sun don't you or vitamin I don't remember which vitamin it was they'd inject a bunch of these vitamins and they reported that they got a little bit bigger prototypes of steroids came and they would inject some of those but they didn't get any bigger they didn't see a big difference between vitamins and steroids. So then they took those steroids and fucking amped them up and increased the dosage by about 50 times. And then they noticed a difference. Okay. <laughs> well, that 50 times dosage, right, is now a normal street dose. They didn't know what the street dosage was. Okay. So they go, well, if the, if the normal dose was one, but taking it to 50 brought results... Fuck it, let's take it to 500. <laughs> fuck it. You know? That'll be 10 That'll times be, better. Yeah, fuck it. You know, and they just keep pouring it on. And those dudes got fucking huge. All right? But it killed them eventually. You know. <laughs> Burn out your heart valves. Depending on what, what, which one it was and for how long they were doing it and what they were doing. And Yeah, I mean, we're just little meat sacks. It's yeah. like, you know, our shit can only take so much yeah. stress and pressure. You know, everybody has a breaking point. Yeah. You can't just, like, keep pouring shit in there, like, forever and expect to... And there are genetic differences. Well, yeah, obviously. There, yeah, not everybody's the same. If you think everybody's the same, you're fucking tripping. You just believe in what your mom told you. <laughs> well, yeah, you're, pre you're, you're pretty, honey. Yeah, that's what your mom said. Fucking, no, they're gen... If you look at those pro bodybuilders, first of all, their diets are perfect. Their fucking workouts are very hard. They're taking a shit ton of drugs that are very fucking good quality. There's lots of them. And if the average person were to take that regime, they wouldn't end up looking like those dudes. Because those dudes also happen to have fantastic genetics that respond well to those drugs. Other people don't respond those that well to those drugs. Some people that fucking don't respond at all wouldn't respond at all to those drugs. I mean, you know, like a little bit. That's it. Other people that could kill. So there's an element of war. Well, that's what I mean. That's why medicine in a lot of ways is yeah. really complicated. And that's right. why there's like this, this big thing about all these different kinds of drugs and why they have to go through all these different kinds of tests. And it's like, even when they do go through all these tests and they release them, there's all this big, long thing. It's like, hey, you might have this side effect or that side effect right. because they don't know. They don't know. They can't test it on everybody. And everybody is genetically a little bit different, so you never know like how that person's gonna react to it. One person it might be awesome, yeah. and another person it might not yeah. work so good, another person it might like cause really, really bad side effects. So. That's what those fucking quarterly drug tests are all about. They go in there and look at your blood work and see how you respond to all that stuff. If anything looks wrong, they can have to change the dosage or even take you off. Yeah, and it's like yeah. anybody that's on any kind of like long term medication. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they have to be under like a doctor's supervision because you have to, and then some drugs stop working or stop yeah. being effective after a certain time and they have to like change it out, change the dose or do whatever. So, you know, like I said, it's complicated and not everyone's the same. So the poster boy of the seventies, of course, was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lou Ferrigno too. Lou, Lou looked fucking great. All right. And that was back in the golden era. There was other ones too, you know, fucking, um, some of them were sh shorter, or some of them were taller, their frames are a little bit different. But the one I think everybody ended up liking was Arnold. And it's just because he was kind of like the total package. 
But a lot of what you're seeing there is genetics. You know what I mean? I could take what he'd take and do what he did at the age that he did, and I wouldn't come out that way. You know, it was his height, the type of frame that he had, and just the way he responded to those drugs, he looked good. And he had a character. Motherfucker was a smart ass. He was funny. And he was a bitch, too. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a bitch. He was stuck up, snotty. But everybody liked him. He was the, the, um, Women that dated him said that he had an addictive quality to him. It's like if you were around him, you didn't want to leave him. Because he was just constantly entertaining. Now, he didn't age that well. You know, a lot of it had to do with the drug abuse at an early age, you know. It was abuse. If you look at his physique and how big he was in the 70s, I mean, at the age of fucking 20-something, I mean, he was just fucking huge, you know. When you see him in Conan and in Terminator, he'd actually lost a lot of size. He, he was small compared to the way he used to look. He was fucking big. But he wasn't tall, but I'm just saying, you know, his proportions. He very big. Not as big as what you could get today, though. Some of those dudes are fucking... That's the thing. Arnold came from the golden era where, the, where aesthetics mattered. You had to look good. The proportions had to be right. They had to be classic proportions. Some of these guys now, man, they're 100 pounds, even, 100 pounds heavier, but they just look fucked up. They just look like a big-ass fucking barn door. They're just nothing aesthetically pleasing about it you know it can get to be where it's just too goddamn much well that's yeah. kind of and we talked about this when we did the history of bodybuilding show where i yeah. kind of feel like maybe less so nowadays but i kind of feel like remember in the 90s when there was really kind of this um there was kind of a trend in bodybuilding for everybody just wanting to get as big as possible yeah and you really got these dudes 90s. and they were just and they were just yeah. like yeah that's what i said and it's yeah. just like and they just looked like these monstrous yeah. freaks of nature with like yeah. veins poking yeah. out everywhere and they were just these big yeah. misshapen they look like yeah. marvel villains or something yeah and the the, the one the main <laughs> one of what she's talking about is named ronnie coleman and he was a cop ronnie was the best looking of them but still, he was just... He, I'm not going to say that Ronnie Coleman was an ugly dude. I'm not saying that he didn't have... He didn't have classic aesthetics. To me, he looked too big. He very unhealthy. He fucked his skeleton up and everything. But Ronnie Coleman is about the peak. You can't get any bigger than that. And you don't want to be... You don't want to be as big as Ronnie Coleman. Well, it's he just kind of like... Good. It's just kind of like when there was a trend, particularly, I guess, in the 80s and 90s in porn yeah. for women to just have these ridiculous, like, beach ball-sized ball size. tits. It gets to the point where it's diminishing returns. Yeah, well, it gets to a point where it's just... It, it's not really sexy, and it just right. looks freakish. And yeah. because when I see a woman like that, all I can think of was, like, her poor back. Yeah. <laughs> Like she can't sleep on her stomach. Yeah. It's like every like nothing, no clothes fit. It just seems like yeah. Those girls though are kind of like the female equivalent of fucking open class bodybuilders though. Well, they got, yeah, they that's got why boob I brought greed. That up. They got boob greed. It's a fetish. They fucking love it. Yeah. The same thing with those open class bodybuilders. They love that shit. It's like an addiction to them. It's it's like body dysmorphia. Yeah. It's pretty for, much the similar kind of thing. For me, that's about it right there. You don't want to be any bigger than that. Well, because that, that still looks natural to some degree. Yeah, it's, that's impossible, natural. But it, it, it's aesthetic. Yeah. It has, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing. That looks within within reason, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not like you don't look like a, you don't, like a monster. Right, yeah. <laughs> you look like a cartoon. You look like a cartoon man. <laughs> you know, like, like a cartoon Conan. But, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now, is that healthy? Uh, no. No. Not to maintain that all year round. No. Uh, but you could come close. Camp Guy's asking what you think about Lee Haney. Uh, Lee Haney. Uh, man, it sounds familiar. I can't put a face to The it. bodybuilder, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I know that name. I think we I talked about him on the... I'd have to go look at him. Uh, what, what in particular? You want me to judge him? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds you'll, real have familiar. To, you'll have to like look it up, I guess. There's so many good ones. That's the thing. There are a lot of good ones. I mean, um, Franco, Franco Colombo. The, I liked the '70s classics um, for the most part. I liked the the '70s golden era aesthetics. You know, a lot of V taper, vacuum pose, fucking good delts, fucking good muscle insertions. 
I'm not, you're not talking about a 300 pound man. You're not that big. You know what I mean? It depends on how tall he is. But you know, I'm I'm taller than Franco Colombo by a couple inches. I mean, Franco Colombo was like one Rogan tall. All right. Um, in a way, though, Franco sometimes was too big for his for his size. I mean, sometimes he looked a little short, squat, and bulky. Other times he looked better, depending on how much weight he had on him at the time. Because Franco was bigger than that. And only like 5'3", uh, maybe? 5'4"? So my height. Yeah. Because I'm 5'3". Yeah. and He's in Conan. He's the fucking tribal guy who's running and fucking he's the first guy you see who runs out of the, the woods and sees Conan's village. Guy with all the tattoos on him. Yeah. That's Franco Colombo. Yeah, I remember that name. Because, like yeah. I said, when we did that show, I remember like looking up a bunch of photos and stuff to. That was already his buddy. He died a few years back. Died of a heart attack swimming. He was from Sardinia. Sandra said, Do any of the girls here uh, find Arnold, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger attractive? Somehow I find him completely unappealing, even when he was young. I do not find him particularly <clears throat> attractive now. We talked about that. Yeah. Who's saying, who's asking this? Sandra. Sandra, okay. Even Arnold, here's the funny thing about Arnold. Arnold had a very, in his prime, had a very magnetic character. His character has not aged too well. He said a lot of fucking crazy shit over the years. He pissed a lot of other bodybuilders off. He changed a lot. Hollywood changed him. I think being a politician changed him. Um... For me, Arnold will always be a guy of the '70s and the '80s. That's the Arnie that I know. You know that 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 was that was ultimate Arnie. Even Arnie in hit, he, Arnie was never sexy. Even Arnie knew that. Yeah, he he's knew. definitely does not have any yeah. sex appeal. No, and Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that. Yeah, he didn't want to do romantic roles. He thought he 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 felt very goofy. He 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 kind of um, felt that he was a little um, like a fish out of water when it came to sexy roles. That's not yeah. who he was. Um, he's also not real serious. Like in in the Terminator roles and in Conan, he comes across being real serious. That's not who he is. If you talk to guys who came up with him, uh, who were friends of his from early on, he was a goofball. Oh, yeah, that definitely comes across. He's just a fucking goofball. (laughs) Constantly joking, constantly fucking talking shit, constantly laughing, constantly teasing somebody else, talking shit about other people, constant goofball. He was never serious. He's still not serious. I kind of wonder about, though. I wonder if that is, if I wonder if that is just like his personality just in general, or is it like, does it stem from some kind of insecurity of some kind? I wonder. Just wondering. I don't know if that's. Uh, no, that's I don't think he's not. insecure at all. I, I don't know the dude, so I don't really know. No, he's not insecure at all. He's, he was an ex tanker from German army, uh, or it might have been Austrian army. I think it was might have been the Austrian army. So he had a military career. He ran away uh, from the military, went AWOL to do a fucking posing competition. He was a bodybuilder at that time. But that's he didn't. A, that totally sounds like something. He yeah, would do. yeah. He was going. To, he says, I'm, "I will go to this. I got to go to the show." And they, "Oh no, you got duty." No, fuck this. I'm going. And he, he got busted for that. But no, he he, you know, he got honorable discharge. He did his time. Um, he was no. He was a very confident guy. He was evidently um, uh, popular with women. He um, had no problem with women. Uh, they flocked to him, but. He said he never really felt like a sexy guy, and evidently he wasn't very good at a sexy role. So he was not like that for some reason. He yeah, was kind of uncomfortable with that. Yeah, and that, it, it, it shows. Yeah, he was not a very open guy. He was kind of... I think closed. that's what it is. He yeah. comes across as just very... Mechanical. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said I wondered if it stemmed from insecurity, because a lot of this, the way that he acts... You know, being out, you know, being boisterous and funny and pranking yeah. and stuff like that. A lot of that comes across as like defense mechanisms because you don't want to like let people in or you don't want to like yeah. let people okay. see any kind of vulnerability. That's what yeah, I meant. I don't know. Maybe. And I think that in a lot of ways, a, a lot of sexiness 
yeah. comes from someone that is willing to be open and vulnerable to an, yeah. to a degree. So somebody that's very closed off and is just kind of like keeping people at arm's length by being just like this over the top, like funny goofball clown type of person um, is not going to have any sex appeal, which is yeah. why like a lot of comedians, for example, don't really have a lot of sex appeal because you know, some of them do. I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them don't. And it's for that reason, because you know that their sense of humor is a defense mechanism, yeah. big, you know, because they have other problems. You know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of pro bodybuilders don't ha have unusual per personalities. Um, they don't have much of a social life. Uh, they well, that out. takes up a lot of... Yeah, they are in a gym all the time working out. And they go to the gym like we would go to the club or, or, or a bar. Yeah, it's just, it's a scene, you know. Yeah, they're hanging out in there, fucking talking and this and that. And then they work out. And then they drink some shit. And then they hang around. They drink some fucking protein shakes. And then they wait for their buddy to show up. And then he works out. and talks to So they're hanging out in the gym talking shit. But they don't have much of a social life. It's yeah. hanging out in that scene. Um... And then they're health food fanatics, so they don't really party that much. Not some of them do. So it seems We're like we're talking they, about the pros. I mean, they wouldn't really be that fun to hang around. with. I don't with think they are because they can't like just like yeah. let loose. They're like, no, I can't eat that. No. I have to eat this raw egg shake or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. That Not a pro. The, the pros are constantly in competition with each other, constantly looking at each other and seeing who's getting bigger than who because they're trying to figure out can I beat him in the ninety days to the show. So they're constantly, you know. They fuck around with each other, but they're just totally focused on that shit, like they're astronauts or something. Yeah, they're like that kind of a person. They're 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 gonna be totally fucking dedicated to that shit. Now, gym rats, that's different. They're not pros. You know what I mean? They have a life outside that. They 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 work out a couple times a week and then they fucking do their shit and they have they party. So that's not quite the same thing. The pros are obsessed. Yeah, just, just like those dudes that ride their damn bicycles. Those pros are also obsessed. They don't really have much of a social Well, like life I said, to get it, to get um, to, to the top pro. level to yeah. be a pro in those types of fields, you really have to kind of dedicate your whole entire life to it. Yeah. You know, it's particularly like I said, if you, you what, anything, you yeah. bodybuilding, gymnastics, anything like that, yeah. you pretty much have to like right. dedicate your whole entire life to like your, you know, your fucking diet and your workout yeah. and your fucking everything. Now, in the case of Arnie, he ended up becoming an actor. So he probably wasn't acting that way. Um, when he was an actor, he was probably living it up. But when he was a pro bodybuilder, uh, no, he was fucking like, totally dedicated to that shit. In terms of guys who had great physiques, who probably had what you would call sexiness, and who were popular with women, and were kind of more of like a full package. I want to say I don't want to I don't want to belittle pro bodybuilders. I don't want to belittle Arnie. He was great in what he did. Arnie wasn't 100% of the full package all the time. All right. He had things that he was lacking. Art artistic ability was one of them. He wasn't very artistic. On the other hand, the guy who had the full package would have been Stallone. Stallone was an artist. He could act. He had good taste in things. He could write. He could write. He could write movies. Uh, they say that he was, uh, he was real fun to hang out with. He partied. Um, he trained with uh, a lot of the same guys that Ar with Arnie and the other guys from that same scene at Gold's Gym, and you know for Rambo three, by the time that happened, he was fucking he was in good shape. But Stallone was always a person. You know what I'm yeah, about? that well, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. He always came across as like a real yeah. person. Whereas I'm not saying Arnold Schwarzenegger is not a real person. I'm just saying he always comes across yeah. as though he's a little robotic or he's yeah. keeping people at arm's length. Right. You know, with his with his facade, this personality, this wall he's put up. Stallone was the kind of guy that could fucking he could be a, he could be the tough guy. He could play that role in a movie. He could be tough. They say he's alpha as shit when he shows up. He's an old guy now in great shape. And they say he shows up to the to the bars where all these fucking other guys are hanging out, muscle guys like him, and they're just like, whoa! It's like he, he's like he's not that big. He's you know he's a little bit taller than me in terms of height wise. But he's kind of like the the old alpha of alphas comes in there, and he's just like at the center of attention between all these fucking dudes who just fucking worship him, fucking muscle dudes and fucking cops and soldiers and shit, you know. And um, but they say that uh, they say that that Stallone um, understood concepts like fucking charm and romance and fucking yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean and. Uh, Wooing women and 
that kind even of though, stuff. and like I said, I mean, I don't really find Sylvester Stallone any more physically attractive than uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm just, you know, I'm saying that. But Sylvester Stallone always struck me as like, if I had to hang out with one of them, I would hang out with Stallone because he always seemed like he'd be more of a real person. Very much so from what I've heard. You know, Like, I mean? I've never met either one of them, but it's just it's all from people who know him and things that I can put together about him. If you wanted to hang out and fucking have a good time at the club, it'd be with Stallone. Honestly, in yeah. a lot of ways, like, as, you know, if you're talking about, like, bodybuilding type yeah. or, you know, that type of look, um, honestly, I think, like, The Rock is, like, sexier. because Well, because he has, like, a personality. Yeah. And he's also kind of a dork, and he's, like, kind of, like, enthusiastic right. about stuff, and it's, like, that's super cute. That's a different generation. I was, yeah. I was talking about yeah. the golden era guys. Right now, it'd be The Rock, Jason Statham. Um, Who's the dude that played Aquaman, Jason Momoa? Yeah, Momoa, he seems pretty cool. Um, I think Statham fucking is cool. Out of all, I'd probably say The Rock. The Rock has a very positive personality. Um, his aesthetics are good. Um, and then uh, there's um, oh, what's his name can look good too. Fucking a dude that played Bronson. Um, Tom played Hardy. Bane. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy can fucking uh, yeah, get pre pretty big too. He's pretty foxy. Yeah. Now. I like his work, but they say he that he's just fucking that you just can't stand to be around him fucking and and, and it kind of it looks like it might be true, but that's I'm just going by one other. They say Vin Diesel's a fucking dick. Really? Yeah, they say Vin Diesel's just. He's Although just I, you know what? Honestly, that doesn't surprise me. They just say he's he kind of comes across like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know him, but I'm they just say saying. he's a dick. I don't know if it's true, but you know. They're like, oh no, be glad you're not around that dude. So, <laughs> that, that, that kind of shit. Like I said, I don't know any of these people yeah. in person, but just, be, I mean, to an extent, you can kind of tell what people would be like. Yeah. Um, you know, if you see them in the public eye a lot, like uh, their personality is at least going to leak through partially, yeah. you would think. Um, you know, because they can't, you can't keep a yeah. clamp down forever. But yeah, Vin Diesel does kind of seem like. <laughs> well, he kind of, I, I'm not going to say it, it's going to like into Steven Seagal territory, but I kind of feel like maybe he takes himself a little bit too seriously. And um, people that take themselves too seriously are just like no fun to hang around yeah. ever. So like I said, that's why, that's why nobody likes yeah. Who was it that sent me the video? Um, one of y'all sent me a video on Facebook about somebody had made a video about why Steven Seagal was like the biggest asshole in Hollywood and like why, why nobody wanted to work with him. And it had like all the stories <laughs> about that people had told him about it's like some of them i knew but some of them i didn't know and uh it was just like super funny i liked that somebody had done like a super cut of like all the dick <laughs> all the dick moves that he pulled over the years <laughs> it's like i don't know i just yeah. like i don't want the whole entire show to devolve into like steven seagal shit again but yeah. it's just kind of like because we always kind of end up uh, <laughs> sorry to rock assist alone makes me chuckle he looks like a melting candle <laughs> but um, actually, during um, Rambo, the fight continues. He that was when he looked the worst. You could tell he was fucking around with the HGH. His fucking his face really was fucked up. Yeah, his face um, is uh, kind of weird. He, he got it fixed though, and that's because for a while there, <clears throat> people thought that you didn't need anabolic steroids, that you could use human growth hormone. And yeah, you can get big on human growth hormone, but you'll, your nose and your lips will get big too. Which <laughs> started, maybe is not what you over want. Over time, it's just start, yeah. So you know they had to fix that. Don't do HGH. It's uh, no. If people thought that maybe that might be an easy way out, that less stress on your heart. No, HGH is see no such thing as an easy fix. No. It's like yeah, it'll be good for the rest of your body, but it's gonna make your face look all yeah. fucked up. Yeah. Now you're gonna look like this big giant, like this. You have this big, huge schnoz, like a fucking. Don't uh, do. Look like a gnome. Don't do steroids. <laughs> I will never tell you to do steroids, <laughs> unless you know what you're doing. But no, do not do steroids. All right, fucking, not without fucking serious supervision and a serious fucking head check about what that does, what the limits are, and what it does to you long term. If you're a young guy, unless there's something wrong with you, you shouldn't need any of those antibiotic steroids unless for some reason you want to become a barn door or you want to get... And yeah, if you do, that's on you. Yeah. Maybe that's what you're going for. Which, yeah. you know, fair enough. I'm not judging, All like right. I said. 
Um, HRT, you know. hormone replacement therapy, or TRT. Yeah, after when you know after thirty five. If you're having problems recovering, that's one of the things you might want to do to keep some of the fucking fat off you. Um, Sorry. Keep your metabolism running good. Cat keep you leaner. And uh, from everything that looks like it can extend life just by keeping you thinner. All right. Well, not thinner, just keeping you from becoming obese. Okay. But you always want to work out past the age of 35. If not, you're going to get fat. Or you're going to get skinny fat. No do. Um, anabolics you want to do as little as you possibly can as late as you possibly can as late as you possibly like 50s, 60s, 70s if it's done right it can strengthen you uh, so at least you'll die strong you might not, you're gonna die but you might die in better condition it might buy you a few more years if you abuse that shit early on, you can't fuck with it later on because you're already ravaged by it. So that's the thing. That's what happened to those dudes from the golden era. They were popping Anavar pills just like candy. By the time they were 16, 17 years old, they're eating that shit. Their livers, they'd fuck your liver up. You know? And then all that fucking muscle on yours, a lot of stress on your heart over the years. Long term. But when you pass 50, there is no long term. Everything's short term. <laughs> you got to be realistic. After 50, there is no longer any long term. Everything's temporary. Everything is short term. So you just want to stay on top of a castle built on a sand foundation. You're just trying to stay it. <laughs> That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, Oracle says the Rock always looks like he's enjoying what he's doing, he is. and that's sexy. Yeah, he see, is. that's what I mean. He just seems like a fun dude. Yeah. Uh, and then Oracle said, "Plus, my ovaries exploded at the photo of the Rock cuddling his newborn baby daughter." Yeah. See? Yeah, everybody's gonna love the that. The difference between okay, the or as or if you see like kind of like a hot guys with like snuggling a kitty. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> there was a big difference between the Rock and his generation of guys. And the golden era bodybuilders of the 70s. The big difference. And the difference was is that The Rock was not a bodybuilder. The Rock was a wrestler. Yeah. Okay. So you're not dealing with these hyper nitpicky fucking possessed little motherfuckers about your muscle insertions and what striations look like. And God damn it, you do not look like an anatomy poster. You know what I mean? That, that The bodybuilders of the... Are, are perfectionists and there is a little bit of the pros I think there's a little bit of the screw loose in there they're, they're, it's like not screw loose it's like body dysmorphia okay but not wrestlers wrestlers were actors and performers and putting on shows like something out of the carnival yeah the circus so Which they knew like how to entertain they had yeah. a lot better and they weren't looking for perfection they were like generalists I just want to be big and strong look good Get up in the ring. Yeah, and look fun. good in the costume. Yeah, in the costume. <laughs> yeah, be healthy. Yeah, strong. I'll throw your ass. Yeah, you know. They, so they're a lot more fun. Yeah, they're already dealing with a more fun personality. So the wrestlers are going to be selected towards personability. You know what I mean? Yeah. But not not bodybuilders. Yeah, because they don't have to be charming. They just yeah. have to stand there and have all of their pro bodybuilders muscles the way they're supposed to be. Pro bodybuilders going to tend towards neurosis, being neurotic. Well, like I said, it's just like any, yeah. you know, for example, yeah. like, you know, women that compete in, you yeah. know, beauty pageants yeah. or, you know, something like that, um, where what's everything. Gonna, exactly. What's going to be more fun? Miss America or a fucking porn star? The porn star is going to be so more fun. Yeah. Not, not Miss America. Because, and like I said, because porn is a lot larger pool. It's like yeah, everybody. Relax. Everybody's not worried about, oh yeah. my God, she has like yeah. three ounces of fat. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. They're just kind of like, whatever. They're like, yeah, and you got some nice teddies there. Hit it, hit it. <laughs> Get up in that bus. <laughs> Jump on all them dudes. <laughs> you know, that's what it's going to be like. So you're, gonna, you're dealing with a more lax situation and, and more friendly people who are a little bit more jack of all trades, who can do a little bit of everything. Bodybuilders were not from that era. Just were not like that. They're obsessed. I mean, and really, anybody yeah. that's obsessed with one thing, yeah, is not really that fun to hang right. around. I mean, just in general, now, no I matter have, what that one thing is. I have to back off what I'm saying. I said bodybuilders. I meant pro bodybuilders. I'm not talking about just gym rats. That's yeah. a big difference. 
because a lot of those porn stars are also gym rats. They'll go to gym, they work out, they take all these same drugs or oh, hormones. Um, they get the same surgeries and stuff. It's it just a lot of times. It's just that the level of fucking neuroses is nowhere near. You know. Yeah. They're not just obsessed with fucking perfection. I mean, to a I mean, to a degree, I think it's. I mean, it's good to like be interested in stuff and to like have you yeah. know ambition and whatnot. But to get so so involved in this one thing, it'd be just like this tiny little. Like, oh my god, I have to, this little muscle has to be like this and this, but that's just really not mentally healthy. I can yeah. see how you would just go off the deep end. And like I said, yeah. no, but no one's going to want to hang out with you. Yeah, no, uh, I can't read that. Nom Fornick said Hulk Hogan was a bodybuilder before wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Yeah, but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a successful, you know what I mean, fucking world fucking renowned bodybuilder. What I gotta do is just look at Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan didn't. Hulk Hogan looked good in a fucking wrest in a in, in a wrestling ring, but tearing the shirt open. Yeah, but that's not that's not what a real pro bodybuilder of the. You see, uh, the seventies and the eighties was very much about aesthetics. There's a, you're not dealing with a sport. There's no score. It's just what the judges like. What you're talking about is a beauty contest. Yeah. Okay. And when they say aesthetics, it doesn't. It's not just the muscles. It's also what they think of that dude's face too, and what they think of his personality, and how he's posing in his routine. And his little taut buttocks. Yeah, just it's, and, well. I think there's also, and no, definitely later on, in Olympia, it had a lot to do with the man's fucking status too and his clout. Because Arnold was winning it when he shouldn't have won it. At times, Arnold comes back to compete. He's been gone for a couple years, you know what I mean? He gets up there on stage, and he looks all right, but the other guys looked better, but we're going to give it to Arnold, because like, you're Arnold. Bitch. You know? You're the shit. You put it on the map. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nah, he shouldn't have won that Yeah, one. and everybody else is, like, looking daggers yeah. into his back. I remember, yeah. did we watch that documentary about yeah. that? Yeah. Hold on, let me get... Well, yeah, anything that's kind of just based on uh, subjective yeah. aesthetic point of view. Like I said, I used to, when I was a little kid... Um, you know, and like Miss America and all that kind of stuff was a, was a thing. It's like sometimes it'd be on, like, because my grandma would watch it. And so sometimes I would watch it and it's like the girl that I thought was the prettiest never won. <laughs> and so for a long time I was like, is there something that matter with me? It's like I never, I'm not saying the ones that won like weren't pretty because a lot of them kind of look the same. I know it's like, you know, I guess they go to the same plastic surgeon and the same hairdresser and stuff. But I don't know. It's like always the one that I thought was the prettiest or the most interesting looking was never the one that won. I don't think I ever predicted like which one was going to win. <laughs> like in all the ones that I watched when I was growing up. So, but you know, I, you know, when I was a kid, I had a fucking, I had a crush on fucking, uh, Lurch from the Adams family. So what the fuck do I know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's attractive and not, you know? I've come I've I've made my peace with that situation. <laughs> yeah, and Oracle saying too, especially because aesthetics change from generation to generation. Exactly. I kind of feel like Yeah, that's the thing. Like people that were sex symbols, I don't know. I kind of feel like to some degree people that were sex symbols in different eras are still like if you showed them to somebody nowadays and said, Hey, this is somebody from nowadays, people would be like, Yeah, they're pretty sexy or whatever, but did there are kind of like different I think particularly with women, like particularly body styles seem to have been more popular during various times. Because I do kind of feel like particularly in the 90s, wasn't it the 90s that had that kind of heroin chic kind of thing? Like especially like in modeling and all that kind of stuff, everybody had to look like. And I guess the 70s to some extent too, where everybody had to look like a scrawny coke whore. But um, <laughs> like with no tits and no hips and shit like that. Eh, yeah, that, that wasn't a good time. Do you remember? So wasn't that... Wasn't that like MTV? Didn't Cindy Crawford have some fucking show on MTV? House of Style? Was that what it was called? I don't even remember. I don't really remember if I saw it, but I just remember kind of it being in the in the culture at the time. Because I was kind of only in my 20s then, I think. But I kind of feel like for a long time, like a lot of the models were like super, super scrawny and like super, super pale. Like they all looked like drug addicts for a while. Do you remember that, Tom? What's that? In the 90s, when all the models and stuff looked like they were on heroin? Yeah, a lot of them were. Well, yeah, beca well because yeah. that was kind of like the look that everybody yeah. was going for then. They look like shit, if you ask me. I never liked those model girls. 
And then I kind of feel like the 70s was like that, too, where everybody had to look like these scrawny coke whores. Like I said, I've seen some movies from the 70s, and some of the actresses that are in those movies, I'm just like, do those women eat? What the fuck? They put they how how do they get into those fucking pants? How do they get those pants? And it's like you could see their fucking pelvic bones like sticking out of the pants. I'm like, do they have to like use a shoehorn to get your ass into those pants? Holy fucking shit! And they were shit. like the plainest things ever. They were like these <laughs> I don't know piebald gingers with no real facial features and no eyelashes. Uh, you know what I mean? Like they might have eyebrows but no eyelashes. Just weird, weird, weird looking shit. Santa yeah. said I like skinny girls. Well, some yeah. people do. You know what I mean? So, so like I said, people I like, like shapely. People like all different things. Yeah. Uh, Dermot says Marilyn Monroe wouldn't make it today, which is mm. sad. As she looked great, I don't know. She might, but she would be not. She'd be unnoticed. Prob. Well, yeah, she might be yeah. because she was. I mean, she's a beautiful girl, but there's a lot of because of the advent of Instagram. Instagram surgeries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just shit, man. You can just go on Instagram, and. Yep. She see like regular ass people just in their yep. house. There's beautiful well, people everywhere. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know how many youngsters we have in the chat, but uh, you youngsters. Yeah, back in the day before the internet and things like in Instagram, you only saw real good looking people on television and movies, and you'd kind of ogle them. They were like the social media of the day. And then you were like lucky to see you saw a real good looking person. You thought it was unusual. Wow. Yeah, they're like, wow, wow look at that person. Really, yeah, wow. You know, it's like it was like a big deal. But now that you have social media, you realize how many people like look like that. Um, yeah, I mean, shit. There's like a lot yeah. of people are like yeah. super good looking. Yeah. <laughs> and you got girls in porn now that are better looking than stars, than Hollywood stars. You got. You can go on on Instagram. Some of those Instagram models that keep saying they're in Dubai, 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 or in Qatar and weird shit like that, they're all hookers, all right? They look better than any fucking Hollywood, Hollywood fucking Hi, superstar. Pokey. You know? Oh, it's, and, and it's a hooker. And secret yeah. being, a lot of them aren't actually in Dubai, but you can actually rent for not very expensive <sighs> yeah. uh, backdrops. To make of various places to make it look yeah. like you're in different places. Yeah. Like a lot of Instagram influencers do that. I think it's yeah. like $300 for a couple of hours or $600 for a couple of hours, something like that. Um, they have all these different backgrounds that look like, um, you know, cruise ships yeah. or it's like, look like these really super high end apartments. Oh, this is my apartment. This yeah. is my little place. Blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the like real, like high end, like Instagram influencers, <sighs> some of that, not all of them, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, some, some of them to actually just yeah. do rent. Yeah. Uh, these kind of like studios that are meant to look like they're specifically for that, yeah. which I thought was very, very funny. Like I read a whole like <laughs> I read like a whole like fucking piece about that. It was like really interesting. Yeah, but there are um, Dubai is filled with high end hookers from all over Europe and the United States yeah. and Russia in there. And, you know, we're talking, you know, seven, a thousand at least to play. You know, they're not cheap. But that's no, that's not a big deal in Dubai. They got a lot of money over there. Well, yeah, a thousand dollars is like nothing. a fucking buck. Yeah, you know they don't care. But like I said, well, in, in a way, a months a year. I kind of money. like, I like I said, I like the way it is nowadays because yeah. you know there's a lot of competition. Obviously, especially if you're a creator, it's like really hard to get noticed because there's so many people doing it. But in a way, I think that's really cool because it's like everybody, not everybody, but you know, most people have the means to make something if they want to make it and you yeah. can kind of build up your own thing. No, I was laughing about like when we were talking about like Instagram influencers and stuff like that. And I think I've mentioned her before, but I really like this, uh, this girl named Jade the Libra who does, she does mostly Halloween stuff and, you know, cleaning and decorating her house for Halloween and stuff like that. She's really into Halloween and spooky shit. Um, and she is a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. And I guess she does like a lot of Instagram influencer stuff too. Cause she's always getting like free shit, like free makeup and clothes and whatnot, like goth clothes and stuff. And she's like super cute. But I was watching this one video that she did a couple years ago. She does like a vlog around Christmas time where she just vlogs every day, just whatever the fuck she's doing, just like baking muffins or going to the grocery store or whatever. <laughs> And it's like, she's in the car. She has like these little, uh, chihuahuas. She has two chihuahuas. And, um, 
she had the chihuahua in the car. She was taking him to the vet. And she's like, every time I put him in the car, he just, like, poops in the car. Yeah. And then she's, like, cleaning up dog poop, like, on the thing. And it's like, she drops the camera and she's just like, you guys, you just fell into the poop. And it's just, like, it's so fucking funny because she's just, like, this gorgeous girl, like, with this gorgeous makeup and perfect nails and everything like that. And she's just, like, the fucking dog is pooping in her car. And it's just, that makes me laugh. And I'm just like, only on YouTube would you see something like that. Where it's like, because she seems like, she's beautiful, but she seems like a real person. You know what I mean? She's like, hey, she has Pat's, po- Pat's poop in her car, just like the rest of us plebs. <laughs> well, what's happened is, is that, um, I mean, I go and look at fucking, like, old television programs. We do, stop it, Pokey. And stuff that's just highly engineered and edited. Shit that we used to watch in the 90s, and it's unwatchable now just unwatchable and that's that comes from watching youtube i watch youtube a lot you know and for some reason it just changed people's tastes well, social th- media has replaced television like i said i think people like to connect with real other shit. people that are yeah. real people yeah um because i think for a long time and this kind of goes back to like the old days like the golden era of hollywood where everything with like everyone's image was very manufactured yeah and it's like you know you can't you know it was particularly back then in the old studio system when you were like under contract to one studio and they would like keep a shit man some of the studios would like cover up murders and shit like that yeah um you know what i mean because they wanted that image of their star to be like untainted yeah and it was only later that some of that shit came out so it's just i think people kind of got sick of seeing these people that are kind of like these beautiful people that are like up on pedestals and they seemed like they weren't real yeah it seemed like it wasn't a real person so i kind of feel like nowadays it's much it's much cooler to have somebody who even though they might be beautiful and look perfect and everything like that but they just have like a regular ass life like you have with dogs pooping in your car a lot of that had to do with keeping everything up on high like it was authority figures and they used it as a means of control and propaganda you know, this is it's well known, um, and it was uh, always uh, a way of the ruling class to keep control of the minds of, of the workers. Um, it's now failing, and look, now we know what the ruling class is really like. <laughs> but we know shit that we never would have known in the twenties. The thing, though, I mean, Hugo's talking about, like, reality shows killed the TV. Um, I think they did, but the thing about reality shows... That was Um, the beginning of social media. Yeah, and well, the thing about it, too, is that other than maybe the first season of MTV's The Real World, which was kind of one of the first reality shows... Everybody knew it wasn't real. um, Yeah, well, that one was pretty good, but even after, like, as time went on... Uh, reality shows got less and less real because all you're seeing, even though they say they film everything, but they still edit things to put across a certain, you know, we have to have like this character and this kid. So they kind of edit things in a way that it's like they make more conflict and shit like that, which or make things seem like th- not really. So that's why I think people like YouTube because even though, you know, that shit can be edited too, obviously, but a lot of people are just making their own shit and just kind of like putting themselves out there. I remember the- Warts and all, which I think people appreciate. I remember the beginning of reality TV. The beginning of reality TV, as far as I know, based on my personal experience of being there at the time, was the Morton Downey Jr. show. That was the beginning of it. And that was kind of like reality TV for the time. Well, all of those kind of talk shows were sort of like that. And they were, none of those were really They weren't real, but they seemed to be real back then because he was sitting there being rude to the guest and fucking, you know, talking shit. And it was a sensation. And then right after that, or maybe around that same time, you started to see things, you know, well, actually, I guess, no, before that time, you already had shit like Ricky Lake and all that, didn't you? Well, you had like, I mean, in the 80s, you had like... In the 80s, you had Geraldo, you had Sally yeah. Jesse Raphael. Yeah. Um, you had Donahue, although that yeah. was pretty restrained. Uh, that was usually just him kind of like interviewing people. I don't remember that being like super egregious. Um, but as time went on, the reality shows got more and more crazy. Yeah. And definitely. like, and yeah, to the point where it's funny because like, um, you know, Dan Bell, he does, he takes like some old clips of like some of those old reality shows, like Jenny yeah. Jones and stuff, and like puts them on. Uh, on some of his videos and it's like it's just funny to watch him now because it's obviously yeah. fake but 
in the time, you didn't see it that way because remember how fake the sitcoms were? Yeah. The sitcoms were becoming absolutely unwatchable. Just the fake laugh tracks, jokes that weren't funny. The shit was just, it was just coming off of a fucking production mill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, all those stupid sitcoms that they had. I kind of feel like the worst, and I do watch, and I, you know, I, I do like some of the ones from back Three's then still. But yeah, ones like Three's Company, stuff like that, that I grew up watching, yeah. they just seem very contrived they were. nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Different Cause, strokes. Because, like you said, they just had these really, like, contrived yeah. situations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this. Webster. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> you know, and like yeah. you know, it's like somebody would like say a funny line, then they'd make like a little face, like, mm, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. like, ah ha ha, laugh yeah, track. Yeah, you know what I mean? Track. It was like vaudeville. Yeah, you can't. I don't. Yeah, you can't really. I'm the kinda, one that I remembered as a kid that was kind of like reality TV. The one that blew me away were the the, the California uh, game shows, like Hollywood Squares. That was fucking hilarious. Cause that was kind of like reality TV. I used to, I used to really like Hollywood you had, Squares. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, you, you, you had fucking people on there just drunk, drunk as shit. Especially old what's his name in there. Fucking what was the gay dude's name again? Fucking Paul Lind. Paul Lind, yeah. Paul Lind would be in there. He'd be tearing that fucking show up. They had to keep his ass under control. And then they'd have fucking just, oh man, fucking what was that fucking chick's name? Oh man! I remember, was Phyllis Diller on there? Phyllis sometimes? Diller. That's yeah, what I was yeah. thinking of. Phyllis Diller. See, I can read. Phyllis mind. Diller would fucking say shit and go right over my head because I was a little kid. I couldn't understand everything that they were talking. about. Everything were, was a sexual. Innuendo. Everything was sex. Everything was about sex, and it was all these sexual innuendos, and you had to be a fucking adult to understand everything. But I could kind of sometimes catch about half of it, and I was fucking just laughing, man. Paul Lynn, that motherfucker was a damn genius. Comedic I, I genius, loved and he he'd be, so and you funny. could see him sitting there, and in between takes, him pouring fucking booze in his fucking glass, and he'd put the glass up <laughs> because they'd be filming them. They'd film six, seven, of them things a day. Yeah, they'd, they'd be, be there all day. They're be like, there all day, I'm not sitting loaded. here all day without booze. Fuck yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of want. I always, feel that. I feel. I always like wanted this show to be kind of like Hollywood Squares, man. Just where we just get like super just drunk and uh, fucking say some shit. Yeah, and <laughs> so, like get like all sexual yeah. innuendo. Well, not even innuendo. <laughs> We those, were are all, those are all still up on YouTube. You can find them. The old one. The what old, was the one? Guy. What was the one? Uh, the Liars Club was another good. That's one. That's a good 70s. one. Yeah. And so was Joker's Wild. Joker's Wild was a little. Oh man, I used to love the Joker's Wild. Joker's Wild was a little faster, but the Liars Club was more fucking Buddy Hackett and fucking people just drunk, lying, to, you know, over objects. Yes, this is a, uh, and you had, and the contestants had to figure out who was telling the truth. Everybody else was lying. They were all pretending like they're lying. Only one of them was telling the truth. And they would give, they would pass around a, an unidentifiable object, and each one would lie. Would make up a story. Uh, make about up a what story it was. about what it was. Only one of them was telling the truth. But you couldn't tell because they Which were all fucking fantastic liars. Already. Every one of them was a good liar. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which, like I said, that's a great fucking idea for yeah, a change. Yeah. I also used to be kind of amused by the newlywed game, mm -hmm. um, even though that was, like, super cheesy. But there's something yeah. about that 70s. Because cause remember in the 70s when there was kind of... I don't know how many people were actually doing this, but there was this whole, like... Uh, cultural thing for like you know swinging and like hey we're married but we're going to porn together and they had all these like dirty board games uh, which they still have but I kind of feel like it was kind of trendy in the 70s and I feel like newlywed game kind of came out of that so it was I think the rule was did Chuck Woolery host that or am I completely I crazy but um I can't remember who hosted it now I thought it was Chuck Woolery but maybe I'm totally wrong um but the rule was you had to have been married less than two years, and then they would ask you, well, they would ask you a question, this is called what? the newlywed game. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then they would ask you a question, and it was always yeah. dirty. It was always like some kind of sexual innuendo thing. Um, and each one of the couple would have to like come up with the answer, and then they'd see like how good they were at like how well they knew each other, I guess, kind of thing. Yeah. And I don't know, something about that show was always like funny to me. They were talking about the match game in the comment section, yeah. the match game. Remember that one? I remember it vaguely. Another one that I used to like that involved a fucking slime ball and he was drunk half the time when he was doing this show. It was called 
the original Family Feud with fucking Richard Dawson. Yeah, that Remember dude. That uh, oh, and that dude was a groper. He would grope the shit out of the women and start oh, fucking he flirting. Was a and he's just drunk off his fucking ass. He was fucking funny though, uh, man. Uh, and let me say something, baby. Bob Eubanks, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was a. Why am yeah, I yeah. thinking Chuck Woolery? What Richard the fuck did Dawson. he host? But yeah, Richard Dawson. Richard Dawson. He was in The Running Man. Yeah, he did great in The Running Man. Yeah, great. Because he's man. such a sleaze. Yeah. But no, he did a great job, man. <laughs> he was. He was very believable. Well, that's why it was yeah. funny, because yeah. he's such a sleep. <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing when they cast that dude. Mm-hmm. They said, Family Feud's still on. You know that, right? I'm pretty sure it's still yeah, on. Yeah, it's not the it's It's not the same. It's not the same well, as like it was. Well, like I said, the the show, the game shows from the 70s, like you said, were, were, a lot, were a lot more fun. because yeah. they. They were live. Well, the thing the about too. it is that it even if the ones nowadays were dirty, it wouldn't be fun anymore because yeah. it's like every everything is dirty, out so. there. Everything's right, yeah. dirty. Back in the seventies, you, had to hide the you fact couldn't it was really dirty. get away with yeah. saying sexual shit on TV, like yeah. especially at seven p.m. like after dinner because yeah. you know kids were still awake and stuff. So you had to be like real creative yeah. about the shit that you said, like the innuendo that you came up with. So and you see, I was living in California at that time, and in California they were live. Yeah. You know, I think the rest of the nation got them recorded. You know what I mean? Because for different time zones. Yeah. But they were shooting them live. And that was just normal for for Hollywood, uh, you know, California at the time. They were live TV had been going on since the 50s. But the rest of the nation got it on delay. Yeah. But uh, so there was kind of like an element of fucking circus to it. You never know what was going to happen. Some shit would get bleeped. Yeah. I remember that shit. But you got to be pretty quick on the bleep yeah. button. Some of it was live, but I don't think it was all <laughs> live because some of the shit, like you said, was recorded, many of them in a single day. But some of the shit I remember being live. I think, I think, I think Jeopardy might have been live, huh? Oh, I'm not sure. Or not Jeopardy. But the thing about or, it is that Price even, is right. even <laughs> when shit is live, yeah. um, it's usually on like a five or ten five second delay. delay. Yeah. Um, so, for that reason, like You're if right. somebody says something fucked up or somebody, yeah. You know, from what I remember, the big shows like Price is Right, I think were live in California. Oh my god, my grandma loved Price is Right. Price is Right, right. So yeah. And then when I was growing up, we would always watch that uh, in the yeah. mornings. <laughs> I remember that one being the biggest one. All the old ladies loved the fucking Price is Right. Yeah, like and I said, my grandma what, loved fucking. Price. You had to know what the price of something was. I was I was so bad at that show. Yeah. Well, just I kind of feel like. I don't know, man. It's like I went to the yeah. grocery store and shit like that, but it's like I don't know how much anything costs. Old ladies know. They did. Yeah, they wanted to know. Oh, here that would be, you know, this and that, you know. My grandmother would be watching. That's, that's a California price. That's not worth. They get mad. Yeah. It's not worth that here in Mississippi. Well, yeah, because shit was cheaper. Yeah, it was cheaper. Yeah, Maybe yeah. that's why. Maybe everything seemed like. Although yeah. some things seemed like cheaper than I was expecting too. Yeah. Well, because it wasn't always. You didn't always have to like identify like expensive shit. Because sometimes some of the games were like, "Hey, here's a can of like fucking baked beans or something like that." Right. You had to put the prices on things and fucking. You had to guess what the price it had. Price had to be within certain things. They they had a lot of different games. It was pretty good. But I remember liking it as a kid, trying to follow it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Although, um, remember how excited everybody got when they rolled out Plinko? Because they only did that like a couple of times. Plinko. Every, it was the oh, one with yeah, that yeah, big yeah, board, yeah. and it's like you yeah. had to go up to the top, and yeah, they give you this big you the metal and disc, yeah, and it would yeah, go down. Plinko. It's like pachinko. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. everybody got so Plinko, excited about it because yeah, they didn't yeah. do it that often. Yeah. So it's like it's like, oh my god, they're doing Plinko. Doing Plinko. Plinko. Shit, it's fucking funny that we came from this culture that's long <laughs> gone. This is is the forgotten culture, people. If you Sergeant remember. Rocco says, "What was the one with Monty Hall? That was Let's Make a Deal." Yeah, Let's Make a let's Deal. Make that deal. was a good one too. I remember that yeah. one. You guys are you guys are bringing it back. Let's. Make That's a what deal. everybody, for whatever reason, yeah. you came in uh, in costume. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. Uh, and you sat in the audience. And you had to make a deal over what's behind this fucking curtain. And, and then and at the and end, Monty Hall yeah, would go Monty to pe- various people in the audience, and yeah. he would ask them if they had something in their purse, or yeah. their pocket, like something weird. Yeah. And if they had it, then you got money. And then you got money. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, do you have a hard boiled egg in yeah. there? And like some people did, because like yeah. some people would think ahead, and they'd be like, yeah. I have to bring like every crazy fucking thing I can think of in yeah. my fucking handbag <laughs> yeah and that was the audience participation they it was yeah. dress up in costumes and wait outside till the show started and they all come in fucking trying to play so the people in the audience that was a wild ass game the people in the audience were eligible to be up on stage yeah so they were jacked trying to get to miss like well, prices right was like that too wasn't it weren't they pulling them out of the audience 
Yes. And playing with them. Yeah. Well, they what they would do is they would call people's names from the audience. No one was dressed up, but they would yeah. call. Um, and I think there was how many people? Was it five people? And I think there was like five yeah. people in the front, and then. Uh, so there'd be five people in the front and then they would give you one thing to bid on. It was usually like a washer dryer or some shit like that. And everybody would bid on it. And the one that got the closest yeah. got to come up on the stage and play the game. Yeah. So some of the people, like they would get consolation prizes and shit, but it's like some of the people didn't, uh, just stay down there and didn't get anything. They didn't get to come up. It's funny how you guys are bringing this up. Mandy Nicole says mountain climber. Oh, I remember that one too. Uh, yeah. Like it had the little guy at the bottom. And if you, every time you got something right, like you he would go, go the, do, 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 yeah, 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 so right. the, the little fucking uh, yodeling for kind you, of song that he did. <laughs> for you youngsters, that shit there, those, those game shows, they probably, they're probably still around. Well, Pluto TV, Sergeant Rocket just pointed out Pluto yeah. TV has a couple of uh, old game show channels. Okay, so they yeah. just play the old game shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Well, like I said, Pluto I TV is uh, streaming. I, I watched the M there's an MST3K yeah. channel and a Rift Tracks channel. And yeah, so those game, game shows show were like too. national events. Back in the 70s and the 80s, the early early 80s, they were that was like that was like our version of social media or fucking reality TV. Those damn game shows. And old ladies watched them even back then. But you but as a kid, you'd get caught up in them too. They were fun games. And they were very exciting. Like the whole crowd was excited, and you're kind of rooting to see if they're going to win, win this prize. And you didn't have anything to gain out of it or lose. There's just something about it. You'd try to start rooting for it. I used to fucking love Jeopardy, man. Yeah, Jeopardy was the one you had to guess. Well, what, no, that was trivia questions. Trivia. Okay, yeah, trivia. What was the one where you had the Wheel of Fortune? Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune was fun too. You're trying to sit, spell out what it is, and you got to fucking hit the yeah. wheel. Yeah, it's like Hangman, but yeah, yeah. yeah sort of. But actually, uh, Let's Make a Deal and Price is Right were more complicated and more entertaining. They weren't as focused. What you never knew what was going to happen. It was crazy. What was the one? What the fuck was that one where no whammies, no whammies, no whammies? What was that called? Press Your Luck? Was it called that Press Your Luck? That sounds familiar. Yeah. Where it's like a thing would go around and then there'd be like a little monster and like you had to push the, the plunger thing down. Yeah. And then if you got the little that. and if you got the little monster guy, like all your points yeah. got taken away. Am I am I yeah, am I high? Yeah, no, it sounds familiar, okay. but I don't remember that. That was one. a real thing, right? I remember. Jo <laughs> I remember really liking Joker's Wild. I like. Yeah, I liked that one too. Yeah. I think it. You know why I liked Joker's Wild when yeah. I was a little kid, is because it's kind of like a card game, right? Yeah. But it was like a it was like a card game, but also like a um, like a slot machine. Yeah, sort it's of. like a slot machine. Because you'd pull this big like lever, and like, I remember you had to bet things and ask, ask questions. Or yeah, something. something like that. But I think I liked I never it. Liked it. I liked it because when you got the Joker, it kind of looked like the devil. Yeah. And uh, and I was super into the devil when I was a little kid. Yeah. This is because uh, because I was evil even when I was a child. Um, I was super obsessed with whatever that um, what's that brand of like deviled ham. Yeah. Underwood? Underwood. Underwood. Underwood devil ham. Yeah. And it was just like this yeah. little can, and my grandmother tell, always had some. And it had like a little devil on it that was yeah. like their logo, and I used to think that was so fucking yeah. cool. Don't tell Sandra about that. She ain't buying that. <laughs> I got her. I didn't kid. like it. I didn't eat it. I, I just got, thought the package like was cool because it had a devil on I it. I was like, got, ooh, that's badass. I already got her on peanut butter. Next thing you know, she's gonna be looking for Underwood deviled ham. All right, Sandra, we had this shit called deviled ham. It came in a little can that big around it, about an inch tall, and the can was wrapped in paper. Yeah, a white paper around it's classy. it. Classy. Yeah, and it fucking said Underwood deviled ham, and then it had a little red devil with a pitchfork. Yeah, on he was like, Rawr. yeah, and you had to pull it out of there. And Man, you I thought that was so cool. Open it up. It was like open it up like cat food, and it was a pate. Yeah. Oh, I never ate it. I thought it was gross, but I, I thought it. I thought the package was cool though. It was a pate. It was like a ham <laughs> pate. It was. What? 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 She yeah, said. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of had a vinegary taste, like it had been um, pickled, slightly pickled. Yeah. And you spread it on crackers. Crackers or uh, bread. I might eat it now, but yeah, on crackers. Good. I don't think I would make a nah, sandwich crackers. out of it, because that would be kind of yeah. nasty. Yeah, but. crackers. Um, but we used, we used to make sandwiches out of it, too. You just uh, toast some white bread, and you put mayonnaise on one piece, and deviled ham on the other, and put it together, and eat it like that. Yeah. Just like that. That was some ghetto shit, man. That was some ghetto shit. Not as ghetto as putting just like one fucking round thing of Oscar Mayer bologna on there. Not as ghetto as potted meat. That's true. 
Not as ghetto as Vienna sausage. Oh my god, my dad loved those. Yeah. Everybody's we always dad loved Vienna sausage. I know that's such a dad thing. They still this... sell them too. Oh, it's yeah. in the grocery store. I think Pookie wants to go outside. Come on, Pook. Let's go outside. Does she have her clothes on? Let's see. She better have her clothes on. She just she her thing now is she likes to go out on the front porch and she just like sits in the planter. And just like, hey, I'm getting my butt all dirty. <laughs> then you open the door and you're like, wanna come in? She's like, no. I'm just sitting out here, sitting in the fucking planner, watching the fucking world go by. Uh, yeah, like spam. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Yeah, they're still deviled ham. And, just, you know, they still sell Vienna sausages, too. It's just that my dad uh, was super into Vienna sausages, so we always had cans of them in the cupboard. And he would just, like, take them out. I'd Like, I ate them when I was really little, but because when I didn't know any better. And, um, you know, but just like he would take them out, like dip them in mustard and stuff. And it's just, like even the smell of them, like brings back weird childhood <laughs> memories. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like living in the fucking trailer park or whatever. Like with the fucking. What you talking about? I said the, the smell of uh, those Vienna sausages. Yeah, I can't even yeah. remember what brand it is, but it reminds Hormel. me of like, being. Is, are they Hormel? Yeah, Hormel made them, I think. Yeah. Well, there are several companies, but I think... Hormel I know, but I'm trying to think of, like, the one that my dad always had. Devil ham. Uh, 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 uh. I mean... I don't know. I'm always kind of... I've always been kind of, like, weirded out by canned meat. You know what I mean? I don't, for whatever reason... Like, I don't mind canned tuna. That's fine. They say you can still find devil ham. Yeah. Yeah, devil ham sandwich. They knew about them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we've, we've had canned chicken, like we've made things with canned chicken before. Like yeah. we made chicken salad or like chicken, chicken salad, pot pie and stuff. Yeah. And that's fine. But I don't know. There's something like, I don't, there's something I, I'm, I don't really like about canned meat. Yeah. I don't, I'm not really super into like canned veggies either, depending on what the veggie is. Some of them don't, some of them gross me out more than others. Like when I was a kid, we always had canned uh, like green beans and stuff like that. And I just always thought they were kind of gross. Um, so shit like green beans and stuff like that, those are always like way better they're if, talking they're, about if they're fresh. They're talking about spam. I'm a fan of spam. I got a lot of spam. He's a house. spam fan. Yeah, they got they got flavor. I should spam. take you to the spam museum yeah. one of these days. You want to get the low sodium spam. It's I think it's in Akron, Ohio. You want to get the low sodium <laughs> spam because the problem with spam is it's too fucking salty. All right. But the low sodium is a lot better. And they got flavored stuff now, like bacon flavor, jalapeno flavor, chorizo flavor. They got good flavors. Slice it thin and fry it first and then put it on a sandwich. Or put it in a ramen. Dice it, fry it, put it in a ramen. Do whatever you want with it. It's good. Even the low sodium one is a little too salty for me, I feel. Yeah. I feel. Some people were thinking, well, that's mystery meat. But no, it is not. It's just yeah. pork shoulder. It's pork shoulder. I think the thing that's upsetting about it to me yeah. um, is that one, it's too salty. It's too salty. And two, I don't like, I, I just have this vision when I was a kid of just turning the can upside down and then it just coming out and just like glistening with that kind of yeah, the glistening. slime on yeah. the outside and it going like pop. It's cooked in the can. Not, that's, but you know, that plopping noise as it hits the plate, not yeah. super appealing, gotta say. You just you gotta know. know what to do with it. I know. Well, Good like idea. I said, I'll eat it. Like, cause you've made it. Like, you fried it and yeah. like and cut it in pieces and like put it in scrambled eggs or an oh, omelet yeah. or something. It's good for breakfast. It's and, okay like that. Yeah. Although I would rather have deli ham yeah. if we're gonna do ham in an omelet. I would rather have deli ham. Spam is the original MRE. The U.S. Army fucking basically mandated spam. Spam was in a ration. Spam, World War spam, Two, spam, the spam, World spam, War Two, American Armed Forces was spam powered. Spam and crackers and fucking cheese, cheese whiz. That's what they lived on. Nam for and coffee says, and cigarettes. Says spam is actually really popular in Hawaii. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's they have whole fucking cuisine yeah. based around spam. Yeah, spam sandwiches, barbecue spam sandwich, and fucking and and, and pineapple. There's a bunch of good. Hawaiian recipes for spam. It's because spam Hawaii just has fish and lobster. There's no room for cows there, and beef is super expensive, so they just buy spam. Honestly, I'd rather eat fish and lobster if that was. They more get available. sick of that. I wouldn't get sick of it. I love seafood. Man, 
when I was in the army, there were guys from Micronesia wouldn't touch lobster. They're like, oh. And like, and like, you don't eat lobster? Because we got so much of that in Micronesia. So they give that away for free at the at the at the bars. Just take it. Yeah. <laughs> they get away for free at the bars. I love seafood. I could yeah. eat seafood every day. I would. I wouldn't yeah. get sick of it. They just sick of it. Sergeant Rocco says there's a restaurant here that serves old '70s fads, grilled spam with Catalina dressing. Also, the diet plate: a hamburger patty with cottage cheese. Oh man. <laughs> I That's fucking old love it. Shit there. Do they have something where they serve? And I'm trying to remember what all this, what all the components of this were. Although that's a little that's a little older than 70s, yeah, that's I 60s, feel. 50s, huh? I kind of feel like 70s was more like let's put a big lettuce leaf, like iceberg lettuce leaf, some cottage cheese, yeah, a pear yeah, or a, a pineapple pear. ring, yeah, yeah, with cottage cheese in the middle, or, yeah. or and or sometimes they had like American cheese in yeah. there somewhere too. Because I kind of feel like yeah. my grandmother made that a lot. Yeah, just because that's what they had. Where it was like canned pears with like yeah. American no, cheese. No, no, no. On it? No, no, no. You're, you're wrong. It's no, I'm not. Ha- yes, you are. It is half. You weren't a- there with my. You, I know exactly. You weren't what, there with no. my. W- w- what my grandma made. I know what she made. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. <laughs> the most common one was a, a half a pear, with a big dollop of fucking mayonnaise in the middle of it. Yeah, she made that too. And grated fucking cheddar cheese. Yeah, she made that too. They called that pear salad. Although normally we didn't have cheddar, so I think she put American cheese on it. Yeah, not good. Well, no. It's actually not bad. It's just like, why would you eat it? I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's. I've gotten to a point now where it's kind of like, look, if you're gonna eat X amount of calories, yeah, don't eat that. You might as well enjoy them. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many calories that is, like half a canned it's, pear with cottage cheese or whatever. No, it's, it's but sour it's like, cream. Or not sour cream, it was mayonnaise. Yeah, so whatever yeah. it was. But, um, you know, how many calories is that? I'm sure you can find something much better to eat with the same amount of calories than that. The variety wasn't there in the 60s and That's 70s. That's all I'm saying. They just had a bunch of canned stuff. It was cheap. It wasn't much variety. But I remember the one you're talking about. You took a ring, you took a ring of pineapple and then dropped a bunch of fucking cottage cheese in the middle mm. of it. It was personal as a piece of lettuce. Yeah. A leaf yeah, lettuce. like a big iceberg lettuce. Yeah, on, on a plate. And then on a little plate about that big. So you had to have a piece of lettuce. And then you put a ring of pineapple. And then an ice cream scoop of fucking cottage cheese. Boom. And it might have had a it might have had a um, a cherry on the top of it, didn't it? Yeah, you could do that if you wanted to be fancy. It's fucking crazy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said they do serve that at the restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they know what we're talking about. Yeah, he says, uh, yes, the restaurant there. serves half a tinned cling peach, like, you know, yeah, yeah. On, on top of the cottage cheese. Yeah, yeah. peach and cottage cheese. Peach yeah. or a pear. Or I've seen pear done yeah. as well. Uh, but it's always out of a can. Pineapple. Always out of a can. It's because they ate out of the cans back then. Because that was some fancy shit. <laughs> yeah. Was, I mean, that's you know, MRE shit. That's, that's, that's the shit that astronauts had. <laughs> well, there was a time, like I said, I've seen a lot of kind of like um, shorts that they showed yeah. in like schools and stuff back then because yeah. they've done them like on MST and Rick's canned time. food. The way yeah, it was like a future. big deal. Well, it's yeah, like you could yeah. have. Well, back in before they had canning, before they yeah. had like preservation, you could only have certain foods at certain times of year, right? And like yeah. if you lived in certain parts of the country, you couldn't have particular foods so canning and stuff that's a big deal we can have oranges all year round even though we don't live in an area where they grow oranges and it's like a big deal i get it but when they can stuff it's like a lot i don't know it's just it just takes a lot of the fucking flavor away and then like i said yeah they, they used to boil the shit out of everything too yeah they boil all the fucking flavor and nutrients out of anything throw the water yeah, so away it's like, and give you a fucking piece why bother of eating it yeah. at that point yeah. it's just like it's just this nasty sad it's not even giving you any like nutrients they didn't know what they were doing no clearly <laughs> yes canned pudding is not good mm. they used to give it to us in our lunches when we were little kids you pull the top off of it and get the little chocolate puddings yeah remember those i used to like those when i was can. super they little they tasted good but only oh, the yeah. chocolate, though. The other flavors could fuck off. I didn't like vanilla or butterscotch or anything. I thought they tasted weird and artificial. I liked them all. I liked them but all. But the equally. chocolate was okay. I liked them all equally. I would eat anything as a kid. I think, well... Most little kids would. I, would eat I don't know. I kind of feel like kids were really picky. I wouldn't. I didn't know the difference. I would eat bologna and just love it. 
Wasn't well, yeah, I did too. I was like a little bit older and I realized, no, bologna sucks. I would eat a raw hot dog thinking that it was great. Yeah, I used to eat those all the time. Too. Then you get a I would just open the fridge and like eat a raw hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. Well, it's really weird because I don't know about kids nowadays, but yeah. when we were growing up, kids were really... It's weird because in a way they were picky because they wouldn't eat normal human food like yeah. the people would eat nowadays. Yeah. But they would eat like the grossest shit yeah. imaginable. Yeah. And you like say, some like fucking, raw hot dogs or something, I, and it would be fine. I'd say, I mean, I did all kinds, of, <laughs> did all kinds of crazy shit when I was a kid. I crawled up on top of the damn counter, fucking stood up. I had to make a fucking ladder to get up to the top of the fucking cupboard, and I got the fucking sugar fucking bundled down and sat up there with a spoon just eating sugar out of the damn. <laughs> the fucking, took the lid off the top. He's of the living, the <laughs> living the dream. Living the dream. Living the dream, man. <laughs> My little ass up there, and fucking underwear on, just eating shit <laughs> like a monk. I can see it. Yeah, teetering, getting ready to put the sugar back at any moment in case somebody came home and put the sugar back, close, close, close it up. That's pretty funny because I know like a lot of kids, me yeah. included, uh, you know, would sneak up in the cabinet. Although, yeah. although my parents weren't one of yeah. those like no cookies before dinner, they weren't yeah. that bad. But um, I know a lot of kids' uh, parents were like that. <laughs> So it's like they had to like sneak and they'd sneak yeah. into the cookie jar or whatever, and that's yeah. kind of like a cliche. But uh, I like that you just went right to the source. You're like, right to fuck, the sugar. fuck the, fuck right the cookies. Sugar. I'm just gonna I eat, eat fucking shit. I would sugar. eat shit you weren't supposed to eat. My mom, my mom, <laughs> my mom had these diet suppressants, and they looked like a fucking. Bu- it looked like a fucking... Were they those chocolatey they were ones AIDS. that were called AIDS? AIDS. I was they, just going to say. They came in a fucking... A-Y-D-S. Yeah. This is, it is a, a real di- thing that exists. It was a exists. diet AIDS. Yeah. It was before the AIDS epidemic hit. Yeah. So they had... They ca- That's came, what they were called. came in a package that looked like C's candies. <laughs> and they were chocolate and chewy. They tasted terrible, though, like wax. And she had them up on top of the refrigerator. I climbed up on top of the refrigerator. I, had, I, was, I was so small back then, I had to get on top of the refrigerator to get to anything. Little Tom with his little yeah. diaper butt. Like, no, I didn't have up. diapers on, but I fucking probably had shorts on. So I'm getting up on top. Probably didn't have a shirt on, just shorts. And I get up there, and I see that, and I'm like, oh. Chocolate. Candy. You know? So I stand up on top of the fucking refrigerator, and I must have ate about eight or, eight or nine of those things, man. And they were appetite suppressants because, one, they were, th- they were thick and real chewy, kind of like wax. They tasted like chocolate, but they didn't have much sugar in them. They were like, they were like chocolate flavored candles. That would be a good way. Mm. To go. All right, but they were chewy, like really bad fudge. And once they got into your stomach, they started to expand to make you feel more full. Well, I, you're only supposed to eat like one of them. I, I ate like <laughs> seven, eight, nine of them. Oh. And uh, my mom comes home from work, you know, and I'm going, oh, my stuff. Oh, she says, what's wrong? You know, I was, I was eating those chocolates. She goes, what chocolate? Chocolates on top of the refrigerator. And she goes, there's no chocolate on top like, of the refrigerator. And she's like, she goes, oh, you're talking about, the, you're talking about these? And I was like, yeah. You ate my AIDS? How many did you eat? <laughs> they were up there for a long time. I said, I don't want to eat a whole bunch of them. She goes, no, you don't have to eat those. She well, threw, now she you threw tell away. me. She threw them away. I was going to say, at least you didn't eat the chocolate x lax And then Tammy yeah. said, my older brother got into my mom's chocolate chocolate x lax oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was like a prank that a lot of people would play back in the day. Yeah. Where they would slip someone some chocolate. Hey, have some candy. And it was chocolate shit flavored X. Brains, yeah, and you would shit your pants. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> 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 well, I think we all kind of had the thing where when we were really little, and I did this too. And I think a lot of kids did this. Where you would go into the cabinet, he'd be like, "Ooh, candy bar," and you would eat it. Yeah. Except it was the uh, baking chocolate. Yeah, you eat that too. That wasn't so. It wasn't uh, enjoyable. No, it's not good. Not enjoyable. Well, because you're supposed to use it to bake with, yeah. so you're supposed to add sugar to it later. So it doesn't like taste. Another one I tried to eat was cake decorations. There were the fucking little sugar numbers. Like oh when you yeah. Have your age, you know what I mean? Like seven, six, yeah. eight. Seven. Those are also a... not so good. No, my mom bought a bunch of those. So every time I'd get a little bit older, she'd put a fucking new one on there. Right. Well, I didn't know that that's where they were coming from. I just found a bunch of candy numbers tried to eat those things they were fucking it's just rock just solid sugar i liked them for a little while you're like oh yeah these are good concentrated did all kinds of fucking stupid shit sergeant rocco was talking about those wax soda bottles i remember yeah. those another time i ate a, almost a whole packet of those damn fucking silver bbs that you put on top of damn cupcakes 
Oh, yeah, yeah. What do they call those? Non P A R E I L S? I don't know. They're they like silver BBs. Yeah, we had those. Yeah, I found them and I was like, I, they were in there with the food. And I was like, these are candy. I ate a bunch of those, but they don't have much flavor. <laughs> just make it real, just real sweet. Yeah, they don't really taste like much of no. anything. Putting whole handfuls in my mouth. <laughs> that sounds like you. <laughs> Trying to chew them. They still sell those. Well, you're a little kid, you know what I mean? You're almost, you're animalistic. You know, you just try to eat everything. <laughs> Looks like candy. Yeah, yeah. Gonna put it. it right in my mouth hole. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Remember eating it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, Remember like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure they still make, they still make like all those sprinkles and shit like that nowadays. Yeah. I don't know if they taste any better because I haven't eaten them personally. Yeah. But uh, I was just watching, I was watching a video the other day on uh, Lara Voltaire. And he was making some Halloween cupcakes and he had bought a whole bunch of like Halloween sprinkles. They're like sprinkles, but they were like shaped like little bats and pumpkins and shit. Yeah. But so I guess you, you I mean, you can eat them, but I don't really think they taste like much of anything. They're She's, just kind of crunchy. She was asking if, if they ever drink fucking tab. Oh my I God. Remember how bad tab was. Honestly, I, I drank one, it, but I don't really remember what it tastes like. There was, there was something else. I forgot what it was called. Maybe some of you guys might remember it. It was before tab. And it was a Coca-Cola. And I think it was some kind of a blue, came in a blue can. And it was like, it was a Diet Coca-Cola. This is back in the 70s. This must have been 77, 76 maybe. I think Coca-Cola made it. And it was undrinkable. Unfucking drinkable I tried to drink it, couldn't drink it. Adults couldn't drink it. It wasn't Tab, though. It was worse. Much worse. It was in worse. a blue can? I think it was in I a blue I just remember can. Tab not tasting like much of anything. When Tab came out, people thought that it was a lot better than the other fucking bullshit that had just come out, but I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, well, everything it, sucked back then, so oh, it's like it was anything. Terrible. Well, and Tab was it was it not like marketed as kind of like a diet yeah, it was drink? Tab. Like it they was, they marketed it to like dieting women. It was one of the first diet drinks. Yeah. It was supposed to be Coca-Cola. But yeah. it didn't, it had zero sugar in it. I just remember it like not yeah, really tasting terrible. like anything. Bitter. Real, real Honestly, bitter. I'm not, I'm still not. Um, yeah. And even growing up, I was never a big soda fan. No, it's it, like, was, it wasn't RC Cola and it wasn't Mountain Thunder. It wasn't Shasta. I actually I quite, I actually right. quite liked Shasta. I don't think it was diet right. I think it was either in a, either in a blue can or a pink can. Moxie, somebody says. Maybe. It was a four fucking terrible. I mean, the shit was fucking terrible. And they immediately pulled it from the shelves. Joe Nash says Moxie, but it was in an orange can. Was it in an orange can? Okay. Might have been Moxie. I'd have to see it. I remember it was the very, very first diet drink. And I remember my mom complaining about it. And all her friends complaining about it. It's like this case. They like they're like, oh, it was fucking terrible. And I think it was made by the Coca Cola company. And um, Sergeant Rocco said all I remember is Fresca. Actually I quite liked Fresca. Yeah, Fresca was not diet though. Uh no, but they it was had a diet Fresca, but they did. Fresca well Fresca was, was kind of more like what flavor was it supposed to be? Grapefruit. Grapefruit? Yeah. yeah, it was good, real good. I actually quite liked Fresca. Yeah. I used to take it to school with me sometimes. Yeah. Fresca was as good as Squirt. It was different than Squirt, but it was Squirt was that was pre-Squirt, was it not? I, I feel the same like time. I feel like Squirt. I don't, I wasn't aware of oh, Squirt. That's a terrible. Squirt name. was good. I was I wasn't aware of that until later. I feel like I like Fresca. I remember taking cans of Fresca to school with me sometimes when I was in elementary school. Yeah. Fresca, squirt. I don't remember until like maybe the late eighties. In California, we had Squirt around the same time we had Fresca. Like it was the answer to Fresca. Fresca was clear, <clears throat> like yeah. um, like, like Sprite or Seven like Up, like Sprite or Seven Up. But it was a real nice, fresh, sweet grapefruit flavor. It was kind of slightly, yeah. slightly dry at the end, but it was good. Yeah, real, it wasn't real. like super. It didn't have a lot of flavor to it, but no. it was just like refreshing. Real, real refreshing, real good. Squirt was extremely citrus. It taste. It also tasted like grapefruit but also like grapefruit and lemon it's almost kind of like a grapefruit lemonade and it wasn't clear it was cloudy and yellow the the original yeah you know what i mean it was almost looked like juice or lemon concentrate it was good then it started to get a little bit more corn syrupy 
I mean, it's still okay, but it, I remember it being really good in the 70s. I mean, I'm pretty sure they still f sell Fresca nowadays, but I'm sure it's a different recipe, just like everything else. Well, it's all corn syrup now. Yeah. Well, that's Back why everybody day. started buying like Mexican Coke and stuff because yeah. it still has like cane sugar in Back it. Back in the 70s, it was sugar cane yeah. and it was, and everything was better. The fucking Coke was better. The fucking Pepsi was better. It was just a better flavor. And what's funny and like uh, my little, little old fucking man that I worked with at fucking Electrolux, you ever notice everybody got fat. Everybody's now fat when they got rid of that sugar cane and put all that corn syrup. Of course y'all gonna get fat. Well, I mean, yeah, and I corn think, is what they use to fatten yeah. up cows and chickens. Because, because that's what you give cattle. That's what he said. And the thing about yeah. corn syrup is that they put it in everything. It in everything. So I, I think even I, shit that you wouldn't yep. think would have sugar or sweetener in it, yep. like bread. Fucking, he said that, and he was from. He was an ancient old man back in the nineties, and you know he he came up in the Great Depression era, twenties and thirties when he was a kid, you know. And he said they didn't have fat people. And they would drink soda and fucking eat things that had sugar in it all day long. And they wouldn't gain they wouldn't get fat. It was the, and I think he's correct. It was that corn syrup. He goes, that'll make you fat. We always knew that'd make you fat. Oh, I'm sure that, that has something to do with it. Well, yeah, because yeah. like I said, the obesity did start it. I don't think that's the only thing, but I think that's like a big factor. Big contributing sure. factor, I think, yeah. is corn syrup. Well, it's a lot more concentrated, like I said, and then they do mm. use corn to fatten up. Because yeah. honestly, like cows and shit, like are not really supposed to eat corn, uh, but they give it to them anyway because it makes them fatter quicker. Yeah. You know. Yeah, mellow yellow also came out around the time of squirt. I remember going yeah. to Pizza Hut when Pizza Hut was a sit-down restaurant with a jukebox. Um, yeah. and we would always get, cause they only had Pepsi products and I wasn't super into like Pepsi or anything. I wasn't, a, like I said, I wasn't super into soda, but everybody else wanted soda. So we always had to get like a pizza and then we'd get like a big pitcher of mellow yellow. All right. They're fighting over that first <laughs> diet soda. Yeah. Look it up. I'm cause now I'm kind of curious. Moxie sounds right, but cause I have heard of that, but I don't remember seeing it. So I don't really know. I remember tab. Um, you know, I remember everybody, like, I remember that kind of, like, magenta. Uh, diet right. It might, oh, it was it, diet yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it might have been diet right. Okay, I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, I said it might have been, it was diet, diet right. Let me go look at it. Alex's Menorah says, Pizza Hut birthday parties were legit. They were. It's like, Pizza Hut used to be, like, a pretty good, like, when it was a big sit-down restaurant. Yeah, it's a cola. Diet right cola. Okay, that's not the same. 1970s. I like that nowadays most sodas are giving you a real sugar option. Yeah, that's it right there. It's blue blue and silver from the 70s. Yeah, I remember that. That's it right there. Yeah, diet right. Yeah. I don't recall if I ever drank that or not. I'm pretty sure I drank Tab. I just don't really remember what it tasted like. I remember Fresca being good because I remember taking that to school with me a couple times, but I don't remember. I don't remember diet right, but I'm sure my mom had it because my mom was like on, on Weight Watchers off that and on shit my whole childhood. That shit was fucking terrible. That shit was fucking terrible. <laughs> One calorie. Yeah. Yeah. Tab was better than that in comparison, and Tab was shit. But still, yeah, I can't even remember. I don't even think, did Tab even taste like anything? Da tab tasted like cola, but bitter, without mm -hmm. any sweetener in it, originally. I think they changed the way Tab tasted over time. Like I said, I do they still make it now? Do yeah, they still make they tab do. nowadays? I'm, I'm pretty do. sure they do. They might. I'm pretty sure they still make fresca nowadays too. But like I said, I don't think it's the same recipe as it used to be. Well, even like I said, even when I was a kid, I wasn't really into soda. Honestly, I always just drank water out of the tap, or milk, mm. or Kool Aid. <laughs> okay. If I had to drink soda, I would drink Sprite or Seven Up. Um, but I didn't like Coke. I didn't like Pepsi. I do like, like Dr. Pepper. I like the medicine-y tasting ones, like Dr. Pepper and Pib. I like those. Um, I like root beer, but I don't know. It just wasn't something I ever really wanted, to, says, what wanted did, to get. What did Pib taste like? Mr. Pib tastes kind of like It kind of tastes like Pepper. Dr. Pepper. I it's, like Dr. Pepper. It kind of tastes like, it's a, it's kind of a medicine-y kind of taste. I wouldn't call it that. 
Sort of. Well, I well I I say that because like a lot of people that I know that have never tasted it before and drank it said it tastes like medicine. You have a lot of people that say all kinds of weird shit. They'll say root beer tastes like medicine. Depends on what. Well, because it's what, sassafras. That's sa- it's sassafras. All right. And there were sa- sassafras tea, and sassafras was used in some ancient medicines. All right, we're talking about eighteen hundreds. All soft drinks were sport drinks. They all had drugs in them back in the day. So they mm-hmm. keep, in the 1800s, early 1900s, they were in saloons. They were fucking getting loaded. They'd give them those drinks, a, a soft drink to pep them up to keep them drinking alcohol. Pepsi. Yeah. Okay. Coca-Cola. Wake up so you can drink more, yeah, drunky. It, the active ingredient was cocaine. Mm-hmm. Later on, substituted for the caffeine. Dr. Pepper. It would pep you up. It was like a doctor. So they were sports drinks of the day. All soft drinks started out as medicinal. Yeah. You know, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> to a degree. Yeah, they called them <laughs> me- medicinal, yeah. but it was They more... weren't like, te- it was more like quack medicine, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> kind of like a way a sports drink is. That's fucking, you know, today a sports drink is, is quackery. They taste good. I like them. All right. Like monster and shit. Yeah. But back in those days, they just put cocaine in them. They worked. That shit there worked. You know what I mean? If it, and, and, and they made a lot of sense. They were sold out of saloons. If a dude was up at the bar, half passed out, give him a soft drink, pep his ass up, he'd wait right up. Have some cocaine. And, yeah, and, and yeah, and he'd order wait right some up, more whiskey. And he'd order some more fucking <laughs> beer and whiskey. It worked. Okay. Pep you right up. Well, Dr. Pepper is kind of like cola. With a a prune flavor, I believe. It, to me, I think it's prunes. Okay. It may be. They won't tell anybody. No. <laughs> but you see, that's something that they would have put in medicine back in the day. Prunes. Prune flavor. Keep you regular. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Pib tastes like it might have a little bit of that same prune style flavor in it. And cream soda. It's kind of like a cream soda. If you ever had cream soda. It's more like closer to cream soda with a little bit of Dr. Pepper in it. That's what Mr. Pibb tastes like. Although it's weird because I like it's Mr. Good. I like root beer. I like Mr. Pibb. I like Dr. Pepper. I do not like cream soda. I like it's cream too soda. sweet. I like for cream me. soda and like red cream soda. I also like something in Michigan they call red pop. Red pop is kind of like cream soda, kind of, with a slight fruit flavor. With a red flavor, it just tastes red. Red pop, red. Red. Well, red is kind red. of a flavor. Yeah, red is a flavor. You yeah. know? Well, because sometimes you get, like, you know, candy that's red or something like that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's cherry or strawberry. It's, it's not. It's not. It's just red it's flavor. It's red flavor. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't taste like actual cherry or strawberry. Yeah. It just kind of tastes red. Not that that's bad, because I kind of like red flavor. But, but I was going to say, too, that... Um, when I was a kid, I don't know if some of you guys that are the same ages may right remember, but there used to be a cough syrup that came in a bottle. You could look it up on there, maybe yeah. show a picture of it. Called Cree Emulsion. Um, I'm sure familiar. I'm sure they don't sell it anymore. It came in like this little bottle, this little brown bottle like this big with a little cap on yeah. it. And it was cough syrup. It's yeah. you know, it's not soda. I fucking loved the taste of that. And uh, sometimes I would drink it when I didn't have a cold. Not going to lie, mm-hmm. just because I liked the taste of it. It was kind of thick, yeah. and it kind of tasted like cherry root beer is what yeah. it kind of tasted like to me, and, but but kind of thick. One time, I loved it so much that one time I drank almost a whole bottle and uh, barfed my guts out. So. Yeah. Sergeant Rocco's in there. <laughs> I guess he's an ex-Soviet citizen. He's talking about they didn't really have sodas in the Soviet Union. They just had um, sparkling water, and they'd add sodas to it. That's actually what a lot of... That's a lot of soft drinks were that for a long time. Coca-Cola and, and Dr. Pepper and some of the other ones came pre-mixed. They were like patented medicines. But when you went to places like soda fountains, they made you a soda that way, that yeah. same way. You could make a custom soda like that. So we had that also, just that it didn't stay around long. By the time... The, well, by the time the 60s came around, they were gone. Yeah, that was kind of more of a thing yeah. like in the 50s, I feel yeah. like. The 50s was like a big thing well, where you had like... was the end of it. Yeah, where you had like yeah. soda jerks. Soda, yeah. You would go to these like little diners and stuff and they'd make you... Yeah. 
you know, like like a thing. And, or, you know, they'd make you something like up in the Northeast, they'd make you like egg creams, yeah. which is kind of like a chocolate soda type of thing with, yeah. it was like chocolate malt and seltzer water, right? They can something make anything, like that. Yeah, they made yeah. different ones. But the 50s is kind of, was the last hurrah. By the time the 60s came around, the big corporations had replaced all that with pre-canned sodas. Knocked all that shit out of business. Couldn't make money, couldn't compete against them. And then it, it be, the, by the time the 60s came around, it was fast food like McDonald's and all that started to come about. Um, but I think all that making your own private sodas went back into the 1800s. Because if I remember correctly... Um, there were there were episodes of the Little Rascals taking place in the 1930s where they go to those places and they make them a soda. Remember? Yeah. So they were doing that. Yeah, for that a was long a big time. thing. Although, like I said, and Sergeant Rocco just brought this up because I was going to say something about that. Yeah. People are starting to do that now because now you can get something called a soda stream, which essentially you can make your own. Mm. It carbonates the water and you can put your own fucking flavors and stuff in it, so yeah. you can make your own shit now. Sergeant Rocco says there's a Russian soda that's neon green and it's called Tarkun. It's really good, but it's an acquired taste. It's tarragon flavored. Oh, shit. Tarragon. I mean, nothing wrong okay. with tarragon. Yeah, but in a, a soda? In certain applications. All right, then, then. I'm not sure how I would feel about that. It might be good. I don't all, know. All right, sorry, Rocco. It sounds weird, but. That, that is, okay, that's the Russian version of root beer. If you get American root beer, or if you want to go even above that, you go to the fucking sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla is the old school root beer. Yeah. It's a drink like that. It's brown like Coca-Cola, carbonated, but it's sassafras root and sugar. Yeah. And some people say it tastes like medicine. Most foreigners don't like it. A lot of Americans love it. I love it. But we were grew, we grew up on it. It's a very sweet and herbal flavor. Kind of like anise. But yeah, I kind of... Maybe root beer is like more of a, like an older person it's, thing. Yeah, it's like... If you ever had anise, which is like the lic, black licorice flavor, it's kind of like that, but it's not black licorice. It's, it's not hot. It's mild. But it's on that same kind of spectrum in a weird way if you can find root beer you tell me what you you tell me what you think of root beer i don't know if you're in the united states or what and i don't usually like things that are flavored like anise flavored like i'm not super into like absinthe or anything like that yeah. but i really do like root beer yeah and then um Grantor's hammer he's a michigan boy we kind of grew up together if you guys don't know him um new to the show he's we and him went to high school together he's a retired policeman he was talking about um Fago, which is kind of like the state brand yeah. in Michigan. All right. Fago. Makes, that makes me think of Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, he says Insane <laughs> Clown Posse. Insane Clown Posse uses um, Red Pop to... Red Pop is the one that they... Uh, spray on spray the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I liked all... Fago was funny because when we were kids, you could get an entire two liter of Fago, I think, for 50 cents. I yeah, that sounds like, about right. You can get it down here, too. You could get a two liter from the same price as a fucking bottle. So it didn't matter. Uh, sometimes you could get sales where you could get two of them for 50 cents, so like a quarter. <laughs> they were trying to get rid of shit. Most of the flavors were, they ranged from okay to fucking terrible. The worst one was one called Arctic Sun. God, it was blue. And it was mint and orange, I think. If I, I think it was what it was supposed to be. Fuck it, shit was terrible. I like both of those flavors, Fuck. but not together. <laughs> Mint and orange. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, maybe it was... Me. Grafters might remember it better than me. It might have been mint and grapefruit. Again, I like both Ar of those Arctic flavors, sun, but not together. It and it was blue. And not it had a picture together. of a gl glacier on it. Uh, the root, Their root beer was mediocre. A lot of stuff was mediocre. The red pop was pretty good. I liked it. Which was just red flavor. Red with a slight cream soda flavor. Well, that artificial red flavor yeah. is a distinctive flavor all its own. Yeah. We were talking about this the other day because I was talking about like a lot of things that, you know, purport to be strawberry yeah. flavored or cherry flavored are actually not flavored like yeah. either of those real things, but are just a generic red flavor. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. But that's like an artificial flavor. Uh, Xanada says, Tom, how can you love anise but not like Jägermeister? You do like I do Jäger like Jägermeister. I don't like Jägermeister. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? He likes it, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Sandra says, oh, man, we don't have root beer here, but I drank it when I was in Canada, and I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. good. 
Filbert Grimm says... If you like root beer, you'd like sarsaparilla. It's even better. Yeah. Can you get a treat down in Florida? Uh, I guess not. Well, I don't think so. I've never seen that. It's a soda. Hmm. I just... Probably not. Yeah, it's orange and mint. Anybody that's ever brushed their teeth before breakfast and then drank orange juice mm -hmm. and realized what a mistake they had made... We'll know that those two flavors do not go together. So yeah. I'm just saying. Ser Sergeant Rocker says, my family in Europe who tried root beer despise it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like a, yeah, a lot of Europeans don't, don't like, like it. it. Um, I don't know if he likes it or not. Do you like it? Does anyone make sarsaparilla? They, I'm, prob I'm sure they okay, probably yeah, do. Yes, so it's like crossing sarsaparilla if you've had Verner's. That's, uh, that's yeah, kind of yeah, like, yeah. that's ginger ale, yeah. It's a ginger ale, yeah. I love ginger ale. Yeah. I don't like ginger beer, though. Ginger beer. I'm gonna get another. I'm gonna get beer actually. Yeah, bring me one yeah, or two or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, just so you don't have to get up again. Um, I really like ginger ale. Verner's, uh, Canada Dry, Seagram's, all that shit's good. But I don't really like ginger beer all that much. It's just too spicy for me. It's hard to get. Um, I know in the UK, like, there's ginger beer everywhere, and some of it was pretty good. In the U.S., um, at least when I was looking, because my ex-husband, like, fucking loved ginger beer, so we would always go looking for it. In the U.S., at least back then, it was much easier only to get, like, Jamaican ginger beer, and the Jamaican ginger beer is, like, much hotter than the U.K. ginger beer, or at least certain, uh, you know, brands of it. And I would find... Ginger ale does not do this, but if I drink Jamaican ginger beer... The second I drink it, I start sneezing and I can't stop. So it's like, it's just like any, like any kind of too hot ginger beer. It's like too hot for me, but I like ginger ale though. And I like like weaker ginger beer, but we even tried to make our own ginger beer, uh, in the bedroom closet. It like, so we had big jars of it. We never could get it. I don't know. It never exploded or anything like that, but it's just like, it was never as good. So we just kind of gave up on it after a while. Um, yeah, Nam Fornix says, I prefer ginger beer to ginger ale. I know a lot of people do. Like I like I said, it just, I don't know. Ginger beer, it just, it's too hot. It's too much for me. It just like, it gets all up in my sinuses and starts making me sneeze. Um, you know, so, but I like ginger ale though. Uh, yeah, root beer. Mug is my favorite. They're all good. Um... I don't know. I don't know which one's my favorite brand. A and W is good. They're all pretty good. Honestly, I don't drink it enough to know one brand from the other. But, you know, they're all pretty good. Like I said, I'm not a big soda fan. For a while, like Tom likes soda. So sometimes we'd go to Winn-Dixie and we'd get their, uh, their kind of like cheapy brand, uh, Czech, C-H-E-K. And they'd have shit like, you know, strawberry soda, which I liked, orange soda. So I would get shit like that. He likes cream soda, which I don't. But I don't know. I just found myself not really, like, drinking it. I don't reach for it. Honestly, when I'm in here, if I'm not drinking alcohol, pretty much the only thing I drink, thank you, is water. You know? We have the thing in our fridge that has... Change hats. You gonna change hats? Yeah. Entertain the people for a second. I gotta. I gotta. I made a big food. old pot of Hungarian food today. I was gonna say. Yeah, Man, that shit, shit is so good. good. I got a lot of it. I made <laughs> chicken paprikash. Took. Uh, I had a whole bunch of um, chicken thighs, with uh, and then chicken drumsticks. <clears throat> a whole bunch of. Them. They got them cheap, so I put them in a pan, brown them. Didn't cook them all the way through, just seared them. Put them aside. Put a bunch of onions in there, fried up the onions, put some red peppers in there, and did that. Um let me see what I had put some more had some oil in there and some chicken chicken drippings from the you know from the searing the chicken. And then I put paprika paprika, a lot of it. Sweet paprika. Put that in there. Put some, then I put the, uh, then put some chicken stock in it. Um, 
Then I took all that and I poured that on top of the chicken, put that in the pot, slow cooked it, like almost two hours, real low, like falling off the bone. I took a bunch of sour cream and, and then whole cream and uh, flour, mixed it up, dropped it all in there to thicken it, let it cook for another half hour. Shit, man, that shit was so good. Damn. I mean, you're supposed to serve it with like egg noodles, but I like it on mashed potatoes. So I, I served it on mashed potatoes. We got a super chat from Zach. Zach sent me five dollars. Thank you. He, Zach says, I've recently discovered mint choco chip ice cream with oh some God. scoops of peanut butter with peanut or almond butter. It's a Ooh. beautiful flavor con. Okay. Honestly, don't, I'm gonna have to try that out. Yeah, don't don't tell don't tell um, Sandra. Don't tell me because I'll yeah. like gain 300 pounds on that shit. Because those yeah. are all my favorite flavors, all in one place. Yeah. Mint and yes. chocolate and almonds are my favorite. Peanut butter does belong in ice cream. I it like does. It. Peanut butter, vanilla ice cream. Melt the peanut butter a little yeah. bit. Pour it over there like hot fudge. I I honestly I would rather have hot peanut butter on vanilla ice cream than hot fudge. You could just take peanut butter, vanilla ice cream, a little bit of milk, and a banana and blend it. Man. Fuck the banana, right. though. Yeah, That's banana. No. Well, you don't need the banana, but with the well, banana. Well, yeah, even I don't need the banana. <laughs> we were talking about that the other day because I said, honestly, um, as much as I love chocolate, which I do, but I've never been a big hot fudge fan. Yeah. Like on ice cream or something like that. It's a little much for me. I'm making Sergeant Rocco hungry. Yeah. Like if I'm going to eat ice cream with like something on it, I would rather have caramel or peanut butter. Yeah. Um, And I want something crunchy in there. Like I said, I want, you know, I want nuts in it too. Yeah, Sandra, we got this thing where we take a big mug, like a big beer mug, like a stein. Take you a German stein, a clear glass one. Put a scoop of ice cream, maybe two scoops of ice cream, and then slowly pour root beer in there. It's called a root beer float. If you like root beer, you'll like those two. You can just eat it with a spoon and drink it. Oh, yeah, root beer floats are good. Ooh. Root beer floats are super good. Yes. Well, that was, I kind of feel like A&W, a and w when they first started out. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not talking about the brand. I'm talking about, like, the, the restaurant. When they first started out, that's kind of what they were known for was root beer floats, yeah. right? Hi, Pookie. Is that Pookie? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, she came back in when I was in the bathroom, I guess. Xanada said, I sent a photo of my PB&J to my friend in the Philippines, and she said, that looks disgusting. Only yeah. Americans eat peanut butter. Ridiculous. They don't, though. Yeah. Thai people eat peanut butter. They yeah. make, like, a peanut butter, like, you know, satay or whatever they call it. Satay. Yeah. Satay. That's peanut, but that's peanut butter, essentially. About. Um, You know, same thing. Who said this? Xanada said Xanada said that. Okay. Chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Yeah, I'd eat that. Yeah. Honestly, I really like, I think we had the Publix brand of this like one time a long time ago. We don't buy a lot of ice cream. But we got like some, it was vanilla ice cream and it had little bitty chocolate peanut butter cups in it. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. that was really good. Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, like little Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. But off brand Reese's because yeah. it wasn't Reese's branded. I don't know if Sandra knows about Reese's peanut butter cups. Maybe, I think I told her. Did they sell those over there? I don't know if they have them in Germany. We got this candy here. It's called a Reese's Pe Peanut Butter Cup, Sandra. And it comes in a little paper cup, brown Well, there's paper. two of them. Like two of them. One. And it's a chocolate shell, and in the middle of it's peanut butter. But it's peanut butter and sugar. It's not gooey. It's so kind of... So it's solid. denser. It's dense. It's kind of... There's no way to describe so the it texture. So it maintains it. Yeah, it holds together. Yeah. And uh, man, they're they're. Uh, that is a they're easily addictive. easily one of the most uh, well, popular you, American candies. What you can do with those is freeze them, and when they come out frozen, you crack them, break them into pieces, and put that into ice cream. Stir stir it in or, or sprinkle it. You can either sprinkle it on top of ice cream. You can stir it into ice cream, or you can make a vanilla. Um, shake, all right, and then at the end, add pieces of well, frozen. Dairy Queen does a blizzard, yeah. Uh, you can get a blizzard with, yeah, Reese, with frozen Reese's peanut butter frozen cups. Frozen Reese's peanut butter cups, because you can get mini ones too, yeah, yeah. But if you're gonna make frozen 
if you're gonna make frozen Reese's peanut butter cups, you just want to freeze them. If you're gonna make a, a blizzard, it's 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 frozen big ones, broken into pieces. Yeah. Into shards. I mean, I kind of feel like I was watching uh, Company Man the other day, which is another good YouTube channel, yeah. and he did a video on Dairy Queen a few days ago, and he was talking about how the blizzard was kind of like their. And it, you know, as far as I know, they're still doing good nowadays, but it's, I feel like the blizzard was like their, that was like the platonic ideal of their menu. Yeah. People still go, I'm, if you don't know, it's like, it's kind of like whipped ice cream with like, and you can have like crunched up frozen yeah. candy bars a very, and they have a ton of, they have M&Ms, they have Heath bars, they have Oreo cookies, they have all different kind of shit you can put in there. And it's yeah. like, they're really, really fucking yeah, good. Sandra says that German peanut butter online shop has everything from Reese's though. Yeah. When you get those peanut butter cups, you only want Reese's. I've never had a knockoff peanut butter cup that tastes like Reese's. Reese's is the Can prototype. I say, though, that as far as chocolate to, like, the ratio of chocolate to peanut butter, I kind of feel like the mini ones, the mini ones are better. I like the big ones. I mean, the big ones are yeah. good, too. I'm not saying that. The only thing that ever came close was when I was living in Boston in Harvard Square they had a candy shop that made candy and they made homemade peanut butter cups oh yeah I in a bunch of different little, flavors oh, yeah, and they were about the half a size of an apple they were about that big mm -hmm. around and about that tall and they were about five bucks and they were worth it they were really good the, the peanut butter filling in the middle was real close real similar to a Reese's filling it had about that same te texture, but it tasted even better. The secret is the texture. Other brands can't quite get the texture right. It's moist, but it's also kind of flaky. It falls apart. You'll, you'll see. Yeah, it's not it's, peanut butter texture. Xanada, someone after my own heart. Reese's with white chocolate, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Honestly, white I know some people are grossed out by white chocolate. I fucking love white chocolate. Yeah. I was the weirdo that every Easter, I, I was like, I don't want regular chocolate bunny. I want a white chocolate bunny. So yeah. I was the only one that got white chocolate bunny because I fucking love white chocolate. Yeah. I love the white chocolate Kit Kat. I love the white chocolate Reese's. I love zero bars. So that's always exciting when you can find those. They don't make a lot of dedicated white chocolate. Sergeant Rocco tell me to try the Aldi peanut butter cups. They're probably pretty good. Everything I've gotten from Aldi is pretty good. Yeah. It's European stuff. I got some one, I got some uh, white chocolate peanut butter cups from... Shit, man. I don't remember what brand it was. It was one of those... You know how um, sometimes at schools they'd give you... Like they'd make the kids like sell the shit yeah. from like a mail order type of thing? And I got some white chocolate peanut butter cups from one of those from like a work... You know, a work colleague's kid or something. And that shit was pretty delicious, too. So I kind of feel like, you know, there's good ones out there. It's not just Reese's. Reese's makes other shit, too. Like, every holiday, they make, um, they'll make, like, uh, like little pumpkins with peanut butter in the middle. Little witches with peanut butter in the middle. Little ghosts, shit like that. They make little Christmas trees, shit like that. So, like, every holiday, they make. Sandra said that she also ate uh, root beer wine gums in Canada they were awesome I don't know what a wine gum is it must be like a, a chew I've heard that phrase but yeah, I'm I not I is. can't really place where I heard it before here in the United States the traditional root beer candy is a thing called a root beer barrel oh yeah and it looks like a, a beer barrel that tall made out of total sugar it's a hard candy like a Jolly Rancher and it's wrapped in plastic in, in, in clear plastic paper and you could get a bunch of them for not, they're cheap, real cheap, uh, and they have that real strong root beer flavor. And um, if you can find those, try those. That's an American classic. They used to give them out from Halloween. I used to love them. The root beer barrels. Honestly, um, you know those candies like the bottle caps. Yeah. Uh, the root beer flavor of the bottle caps yeah, is the only flavor yeah. that's worth eating. Yeah. So we would get bottle caps when we were growing up at Halloween, and they came like three in a packet. And yeah. you'd open them, and I would take all the root beer ones out and then, like, throw the other ones away. Yeah. I didn't like any of the other flavors. Uh, thank you, Zach. He says, Jenny, did you ever work for the Girl Scout Cookie Extortion Mafia? Yes, I did. Which was your favorite, if so, Thin Mints? I mean, I know yeah. everybody says that. All right, um, Sergeant Reichel. He says, seriously, Jenny and Tom, I'd love to send you some Buckeyes 
and Ohio P PBJ chocolate, especially. Do you have a P.O. box? Here's the thing. Accepting food from total strangers online is kind of dangerous. Are you going to poison us? Yeah, unless <laughs> it's totally factory sealed. Um, you know what I mean? It has to be something totally factory sealed. But yeah, we have, we have, a, uh, we have, you can contact Jenny. Um, on, Facebook on Facebook or Instagram or Patreon yeah. or whatever. And I can give you, we don't have a P.O. box, but I'll send people a home address. Right. Y'all aren't going to stalk us. You better not. Yeah. I mean, Tom's armed. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I stalk you. All right? <laughs> that was my fucking job. All right. <laughs> no one's. I stalk, stalk us. you. We're not. It, we're not cool enough for anyone to stalk if they, us. If they have put me on you, it's because they want something bad to happen to you. <laughs> okay, I'm not worried about stalkers. <laughs> I'm not either, really. No. And honestly, I've been asked about that, like, on, because I write about a lot of true crime and stuff, and I've been asked, it's like, do yeah. you, since you write about, like, some murderers that might still be alive, do you worry they're coming after you? I'm like, well, I don't know. The chances of that happening are pretty slim, gotta say. Mm. Uh, yeah. I got a lot more shit I gotta worry about, <laughs> so, you know, of all the things. Yeah, I mean, honestly... I, I kind of feel like, can anybody really... I know that there's some people that don't like mint, but of all the Girl Scout cookies... I mean, thin mints are kind of like the best ones, and especially if they're frozen. Um, although I will say that if it's not Girl Scout cookie time, um, you can get, what are those uh, Keebler cookies called? I think they're called grasshoppers. And they taste uh, exactly the same. So, you know what I mean? They're a little bit thicker and they're square. They're not round, but they're okay, okay. the same flavor. A wine gum. It's not a chewing gum, but a soft gum, like something from Harbor Hill. It's a gummy bear. We oh, call okay. it a gummy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, the root beer gummies are good. Um, you you would like the root beer barrel, the traditional root beer barrel. Try to find those. They're hard. It's a hard candy, in plastic, clear plastic. They'll come in a big bag. They're cheap. And it's kind of like a. It's like a little, you know, the lollipops? They're like that, but it doesn't have a sticker. It doesn't have a, a, a handle on it. And it's, um, if you get a good brand, they've got a real good flavor. You just put them in your mouth, and it's kind of like a, like a Ricola or something. Ricola. Yeah. That's Although a, I tell that's, you what, that's a cough drop in case you Yeah, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that uh, uh, the real good ones are aromatic like yeah. that. Um, although I tell you one thing. Americans do not know what good black licorice tastes like. European black licorice, like up in Scandinavia, is like eating a piece of fine meat. It's real chewy, fantastic flavor, man. Super, super aromatic. I love Scandinavian black licorice, man. That shit is fucking good, man. Really good. I'm not a big black it's like licorice food. fan. It's like a food. It's not like candy. I mean, like I'll food. eat it. I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite thing. Whew. We've kind of talked about this before where you're more of like a fruity candy dude mm. and I'm more of like a nutty chocolate yeah. candy person. All right, so, Sergeant Rocket said it'll be factory sealed. Okay, just contact her on Facebook. Yeah, and I'll just give you, like I said, yeah. I can give you the home address. She can you're give you a home address. Oh, I poured that like an asshole. That's you okay. poured it like an asshole. Now you got to drink it like an asshole. It's all foam. No, I'll wait till it's... All right. It's okay. I'm patient. Yeah. I'm patient. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like licorice. I don't like Twizzlers. If I'm gonna, like I said, it's one of those things where I've gotten to the age now where, you know, I, ha I have to watch the calories. So if I'm gonna eat something sweet, if I'm gonna eat something desserty, like candy or cake or something like that, it's gotta be something I really, really like. I don't really wanna waste 300, 500, 700 calories on something that's just like mediocre. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want something really, 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 really good. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> Sandra's talking about saltwater taffy. That's another one. Sandra. I bought you a five-pound yeah. bag of saltwater taffy for your birthday. We have, the, we, have this, <laughs> we have this stuff here in America called saltwater taffy. It's been around for over 100 years. And it's a candy. It's chewy. It's handmade. It's kind of like, kind of like a Starburst candy. There's no way to describe it. They bake it, and they roll it out, and then they slice it. And there's stuff braided into it so they can make patterns. 
and it's very chewy but it dissolves as you chew it and there's a bunch of different flavors like cream flavors a apple black licorice watermelon i mean you can berry, pretty much make any flavor. peanut butter they got peanut butter salt water tea. i do like that one yeah. i like the vanilla peanut butter i yeah. like that kind of i don't really like the fruity flavor so much you can get it online you can peppermint the peppermint, peppermint too you can't buy it in stores anymore it's too old school well it's hard to get it's, it's hard to get yeah it has to be made on old-fashioned machinery or it has to be made by hand but you can get it online. It's called salt water taffy. Remember I sent you that picture? I was in St. Augustine. Yeah. In the, you know, in the big touristy historic part of St. Augustine, there was a whole shop yeah. that's all taffy. Yeah. It, and they it, make their own taffy from scratch. Each, each little piece comes wrapped in wax paper. And then you'll get a big clear bag. Oh, you'll get a box when you order it. It'll come in a big cardboard box and you open it up and there's a big plastic bag like a ziplock and you open it up and in there's all these pieces of candy wrapped in, in wax paper they're fantastic uh, some of these companies will sell an assortment other companies you can tell them what flavors you want in there if you want peanut butter man it's white cream with a peanut butter man it's really good really good but i, I would recommend an assortment for your first time because even the, even the the peppermint ones are good. And I, honestly, I'm really into the peppermint ones. It's chewy, and then you swallow it. Mandy Nicole says real saltwater taffy is so stinking good. Yeah, in Florida, yeah. it's not too. There's a lot of like saltwater taffy shops around here because it's kind of a Florida thing. Yeah. Um, he's she says here in Pompano Beach, which is down in South Florida, uh, yeah. we have a bunch of shops here. And like I said, in St. Augustine, they there's at least one saltwater taffy shop because I sent yeah. you a picture of it. It's when addictive. I was there. It's very addictive. And even though that's not my favorite type of candy, yeah. but like the pep, like I bought you that big, huge bag of it yeah. that one year. And, um, but the peppermint one was really yeah. good. And the peanut butter one's good. They have a chocolate one. <laughs> Sandra says, glad I don't live with Tom and Jenny. I would weigh 200 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard not to gain weight around here. And I try not to like eat all that much, but yeah, it's hard. We don't buy a lot of junk food. No. We don't when buy. When I start talking about it, I start wanting it. Yeah, we don't. I mean, I don't buy candy. I don't. Even when I'm in the grocery store, I don't. We don't buy candy or cake or anything like that. Zen it's like, goes, bro, I will eat a whole fucking bag of salt water. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. The problem with salt water taffy is when you start, you have a fucking five pound bag, and it's very difficult to stop. That's Xanada. That's a skinny <laughs> little motherfucker. It's very difficult to stop eating it. You just want to. Oh man. Oh man. And it's, and it's, some of the new stuff kind of has a slightly artificial flavor. The flavors are a little more powerful than nature will allow, but they're still really good. The old school stuff was a little milder flavors because they're using old fashioned flavorings. It's both good. It's, it's, it's both good though. I, I can't really choose. Some people like the new taffies. Some people like the old taffies. It just depends on what you're into. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it depends on the... And Xanada said the only one I don't like is banana flavor. I don't like banana... I like that one, though. Yeah. I don't like banana flavor in anything. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of bananas, like natural bananas. Yeah. And I really don't like anything that's artificially yeah. banana flavored. That's so, just like one of the grossest things Sandra ever. Googled it. She says, we have something similar here, too. It's called soft toffees. Yeah, so yeah. it's similar. Yeah. And honestly, like sometimes, I don't even think they call this saltwater taffy. Do you remember yeah. back in the old days? I don't even remember if they sell these anymore. But you know what? Halloween. Yeah. Sometimes if you went to like some, uh, you know, cheap motherfucker's house, they would put in your bag these candies. And I'm not judging because I liked these, but they were essentially, it was like taffy, but one of them was wrapped in orange and one of them was wrapped in black. And they were... What flavor were they supposed to be? I don't understand. I don't know if they were supposed to be like peanut butter flavored, if they were like honey flavored. Maybe it was like a bit of honey, but kind of softer. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, um, you know, they're good, but I'm just, they came in like that real cheap, like $5 variety bag that also had like those fucking it was cheap ass like, lollipops and stuff. Kind of like a Chico stick. Yeah. Remember the Chico stick? Yeah. That was a weird thing. I don't think they make those anymore. Uh, uh, you no, know, they actually make all those old candies still. There's a company that bought all of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, Somebody make, still makes those fucking... 
they Neko make, wafers. They make Neko wafers. They make all those old. Why would you even bother? They, it's a retro experience. Thank you, Zach. But one uh, one company owns all those ancient companies, and they make it's like novelty old fashioned candies. Remember the little ones that had the little babies? They were little brown babies. Look like little mummies. Remember those things? And you chew them. They were real chewy. Wait, I'm chewing on ba- yeah, like they were, mummy little babies? babies. They were brown flavored. I forgot what they were called. Brown flavored. <laughs> no, they were brown. They they looked like little babies, and they were brown. I think I know what you're talking about, box. but I don't think I ever had them though. It didn't. They were they were babies, but they were shaped more like an Egyptian sarcophagus. Okay. What were I those think things I called? think I know what you're talking about. Sugar babies. Oh yeah yeah I think yeah. They were called sugar babies. Oh uh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah yeah, they were good too. I remember those. Those were old cans. I don't think I ever bought those because I was like, wow. They were good. They were real good. Thank you, Zach. It kind of tasted like. He says the biggest things I have trouble not killing in one sitting is peanut brittle. Ooh, peanut brittle. Yeah. Mm, I yeah. want to. I haven't had peanut brittle in a long time. Yeah, peanut brittle. And beef it's jerky. It's easy to make. Yeah, I've made it before. Yeah. I made it in school, and beef jerky. I'm not a big fan of beef jerky. You can actually, if you look online. I didn't include this in the recipe book. Maybe I should have. Pretty much all of the American famous Mars and M&M's candy bars, you can make those at home on a sheet pan. It won't look the same. You just do it in layers. It's a lot easier to make it in a big sheet pan and cut it out. So you won't have chocolate going down the side. But you can make. We used to make O. Henry bars. God, they were good. And mm. a sheet pan. Um, $100,000 bars. Remember those? Mm-hmm. With the fucking Rice Krispies and the yeah, caramel. Yeah, like a hundred grand, I think they yeah, called yeah, them. Yeah, hundred grand, what they call them now. You can make them in a sheet pan, uh, pretty quickly, and and they come out. And you got you you get yourself fucking fat. <laughs> you could even make um, uh, Snicker bars. Mm-hmm. You can make them in a sheet pan. The uh, Snickers bars are also super good frozen. Yeah, and I will say too that the Snickers ice cream bars yeah. are fantastic. Right, I love that shit. Um, but yeah, Snickers bars. I, I honestly, if I'm gonna eat a candy bar, like I said, it's gonna be something with nuts or peanut butter or something crunchy in it. You know what I mean? I like yeah. crunchy shit with nuts in it or like a Twix that has a cookie yeah. in the middle. I don't really like just ones that are kind of plain. Yeah, you see, Zana just told me said Chico sticks are still super popular in California, Southern California. Yeah, dude, I was naming some shit. I was blowing. I was blowing fucking. Um, Khan of Atslan's mind, all right, uh, bringing up old Mexican candies that I grew up with in Southern California. Shit that he forgot about. Mexican candies from the 70s. You see, Long Beach, California, back in the 70s, was heavy Mexican influence. Every little, every little dime store, or what they call liquor stores back in the days, they did have beer and some liquor, but it was mostly about selling kids candy and comic books and fucking shit like that. You know what I mean? And we'd go down there and we would buy up all the fucking candy. You know? <laughs> it was like the little neighborhood store. Okay? Yeah. Well, they had American candy and then Mexican stuff in the same store. And we we didn't give a shit. The Mexicans... Mexican Candy's can, candy, Candy's bitch. candy. <laughs> and the Mexican stuff was like half price. Okay? Because, because of the peso conversions and stuff. So you could get a lot of Mexican candy, and they had one candy that I remembered. It looked like a, it was like a lollipop, all right. But it's it was a like an umbrella, like a cone about that tall, okay. That got skinny on the top. That was red, white, and green, the Mexican colors, and it was like. Oh, a I've lollipop. seen those. Remember those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen those. you could get like. I think they were only like maybe five cents a piece. So you could get like a bunch of them. Okay. And they were so the kids good. are buying them just showing oh, them yeah, all yeah, 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 at yeah, the yeah. same time. <laughs> another, one that they, another one that they would give you was a piece of paper with little buttons stuck to it. And you oh my God, buttons. I used to love those. Remember those? Yeah. <laughs> they had Mexican ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got those. Yeah. Well, that, well, wasn't there also uh, Mexican stoplight candy? Yeah, they had all kinds of Mexican candy. Yeah, it was good. good. And then like, I remember they, that. They had these weird Mexican treats. That were candy, but not in the American sense of, of what candy was. Like salted prunes, a bag of salted prunes, 
and you would just challenge yourself eating these things. Your mouth would all fucking pucker up and shit. That's it was salty as fuck. Then you're like, why do I have to poop suddenly? <laughs> they had the fucking, they had the fucking uh, seeds in them and everything. And we're like, here, see if you can eat it. It was like a challenge. You, okay, you know how these kids are today eating those warheads? Ultra or, sour. Or like booger flavored jelly beans or vomit flavored jelly beans yeah, no, like the Harry no. Potter ones. No, that's not that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. The warhead like the super sour shit. Super, kids. super sour shit, like warheads, okay? Where like kids are challenging each other, can you eat that? All right. Yeah. Well, the Mexicans had that. They had a, they had that shit cornered with these fucking salted fucking prunes, okay? See if you can hang on to your shit, fucking eating that thing. It's salty <laughs> as fuck. Hang on to your you're shit. like mouth surfing. You are taking <laughs> it like going, <laughs> looking at each other. And you, little kids, you know, little boys, they're going, fuck it. Eat it. It was a challenge, you know what I mean? It's prove that you're a man eating that. <laughs> and then another one that we used to get was the Mexican dry shrimp. It'd be a whole pack of these little bitty golf shrimp. They'd be dried down to nothing. They had the shell and all. We're just eating them like popcorn. They were good. They were really good. I would eat that. Yeah, they were good. And they were, that they sounds were, delicious. They were spicy, actually. too. And Honestly, like, you could shake that shit over like a thing of popcorn. Yeah. That'd probably be really good. <laughs> yeah. Little golf shirt. Next time we're at the movies. And they had the shell on them and, anything, and, and, and everything. It didn't yeah. matter. Crunchy. You're just crunchy. Just eat them. You can eat the shell. Were, it's fine. They, were, they didn't weigh anything. And uh, like you could get a big bag of them for a quarter. Bag about that tall, like that. You're sitting there. See, you're a like kid. Popcorn. You only have like a few coins in your yeah. pocket. You got to like maximize your. They fucking... only gave you a dollar. Sure. Yeah, you I know. know. So you had to buy as much as you could. It's like, well, I can buy one Jolly Rancher, That's or right. <laughs> I can buy a whole bag of like yeah. these weird like shrimpy things. Yeah. <laughs> the Mexicans understood the game. They understood <laughs> the game. They're like, we got to get that kid's dollar, as much of that kid's dollar. Now, what what would lose out is the Mexicans would lose out to Jolly Rancher. Okay. I mean. Watermelon Jolly yeah. Ranchers are pretty much the best yeah. thing ever. Nowadays, a Jolly Rancher is a little cube wrapped in paper. Well, they had cubes the and day, they had the, stick. like, the sticks. Back well, they, they had both when I was growing up. When I was a kid, they did the little cubes didn't come out yet. It was just those sticks. And, man, they would put you into a fucking conundrum with those fucking sticks. Because you only had so much money. And they were cheap. They were like 10 cents each for a stick. Maybe less. And they'd have all of them, man. They'd have a fire stick, a t an orange ones, and fucking grape ones, and watermelons, and green apple. And you you didn't know which one to get because you only had so much. So you got to stand there for like an hour. Again. Yeah, so you're like a kid trying to do advanced fucking calculations in your fucking head <laughs> of which ones you can afford and which one you're going to sacrifice. I never got that grape one. I was I never liked the grape stick. I don't really like the grape. I didn't either. like it. It was too sweet. And but, I don't mind some grape flavored things, yeah. but but the fire stick always had always had me enthralled. See, I don't the like watermelon. That. Yeah, the watermelon. The cherry and that the, green apple. The watermelon and the cherry yeah. were the best ones. I don't like green apple yeah. stuff. I like that. And then they came out with and then I remember when a new flavor came out and my mind was fucking blown as a kid to understand the, the concept that a new flavor could appear someone invented like, a new flavor fuck. What? and the flavor was peach yeah oh, i loved it peach they had a peach one again i'm not a real i like oh, peaches man. i'm not a big fan of artificial peach flavor and i think they had a, a oh and the lemon one they had a peach one and a lemon okay one. now that, lemon that i will eat really lemon good. shit all day long oh yeah even if it's artificial real i don't give yeah. a shit lemon lime kind of flavor i'll eat that shit all day long yeah so there's like a bunch of questions that we got behind on. Yeah. Santa says, have you guys ever had or made puppy chow? Yes, but I don't think we call it that down here, but I, I, know, know, what, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I've, I've made that. Um, or no bake, bake cookies. Yeah. Um, Sergeant Rocco says, I hate to have to leave. It's hard for me to catch you live, but thank you so much for the warm welcome. I'll be back. Thank you very much. Thanks. Also later, he says, today's my first day of retirement. Damn. Congratulations. Who says this? Sergeant Rocco. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll hit Patreon as soon as my checks start and support you. Thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. Thank you very Seriously, much. Seriously, don't feel like you have to, but, you know, we appreciate it, obviously, if you right. can. And we'll send you some Mally's Buckeyes. Thank you very much. Okay. That's, like, awesome. I'm looking forward to that. So, you know, uh, somebody also asked, what I feel like somebody else asked a question, and I missed it. So which one was Puppy Chow? Uh, that was also, um, that was Xanada. Yeah, but what is it? I don't know what that it's is. It's kind of like, isn't it kind of like Chex Mix? 
I kind of feel like it's oh like checks mix and you mix all the shit together and then you put uh, Worcestershire sauce in it and mix yeah. it. I isn't it like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe I'm thinking of something else. I think I think it's what he's talking about. Tammy think, says, "Have you tried a Take Five candy bar? Yes, and they are fucking delicious. I don't think I remember. Are it. they the ones? I think they still sell them. Yeah. I think if this is what I'm thinking of, it's chocolate, but it also has peanut butter and maybe pretzels and cookie. So it's got like a crunchy element. It's got like a nutty element. Yeah. If it's the one I'm thinking of. You go say, yeah, Tom, I good. had that, the little umbrella. It's called Piruli. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was good. We liked them. I couldn't tell you what flavor it was. It was just sweet. I don't think the colors had different flavors, if I remember correctly. Well, do you remember it was those? all just one flavor. Do you remember those popsicles yeah. that they sold at the ice cream truck? Yeah. That were like the red, white, and red, blue? Red, bomb like pops. The, rock, the bomb pops? Yeah. Um... I kind of feel like they were supposed to be different flavors, but they never really tasted different to me. They just tasted like ice flavor. Uh, they, they, I remember them tasting different. I think it was lemon, cherry, and groselia, which is kind of like a berry flavor. I guess, That's but I don't I know. They all kind of like blended together. The I feel white like. one was kind of like 7-Up. Okay. Yeah, and the red one was like cherry. Yeah, I think they were different flavors. Yeah, I remember them being pretty good. I liked them. Honestly, if the ice cream truck came, I never got those. My brother liked them, yeah. but um, I usually got like the Mickey Mouse bar or uh, Nutty Buddies. You know, the ice cream cone with the nuts and the hard yeah. chocolate on top. Camp guy says to make a, ch- a shot masala powder you can sprinkle on vegetables and fried. I have some. Yeah, shot we have masala. some. Yeah, we have some. Um, yeah, you can also make that. We're all about Indian food. Yeah. The Indian food. Well, we have um, pretty close to us. There are some really good uh, Asian markets. Yeah. We have a really good Asian market. What the fuck is that place called? Spice World? Spice, uh, Spice Land. Land. Spice Land. Yeah. And it's pretty big. Yeah. And they have all they have a refrigerated section. They have a produce section. Everything. You can get pretty much anything you want. Mostly Indian food, but they have some... Uh, they have British candy and cookies. They have Thai food. They have some Chinese and Japanese stuff, but it's mostly Indian stuff. Um, the, the, can, the, the the ice cream that I used to get from the ice cream truck wasn't the bomb pop. I used to like the banana and um, fudge one. It was like a bomb pop, but it was brown and with a yellow stripe in the middle. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember that. That one, I used to get that one? I never got that. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I think it was called the super fudge bomb pop or something like that. And then the other one I used to get was one called strawberry shortcake. Okay, I got that Remember sometimes that too. Yeah, that one was good. Yeah, and they also had a chocolate version. That yeah, sometimes you get yep. that one too. You can still get that, I think. Yeah, strawberry shortcake. It was a, it was a, it's an ice cream bar that had like a strawberry filling, a white outer shell made out mm-hmm. of cream. And oh it was yeah. Dipped in a red and white little crumbles. Mm-hmm. It was cheap as shit, a cheap ice cream, but it was just, it was delicious. Can I say, when yeah. I was in the UK, I don't know if they sell them, because some of you guys are Brits, so you can tell me. When I was in the UK, they had something called a Magnum ice cream bar. And it was kind of like that, but like a thousand times better. And it was like this really thick, like sumptuous ice cream bar with like the hard candy shell on the outside. And it was so, so good. That's puppy chow. I don't recognize it. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like... Chex Mix with something. Sort of. Yeah. But it's not really like Never Chex Mix because Chex Mix has like other shit in it, like, looks like pretzels cr- and whatnot. It looks like, what was that shit? Frosted mini wheats is what it looks like. Sort of, but it looks like, Fine. it looks more like um, rice Chex, but with like covered shit on it. They Which, had this other stuff that was kind of like that. You took Chex, Chex cereal, a, a white one and a brown one. There were two different ones with little pretzels, nuts. No. Marshmallows? No. Nuts. Well, you Mar- could if you wanted, but I would rather not. <laughs> Certain spices that you put in there. Yeah. I think it actually had cayenne pepper sprinkled into yeah, it. Yeah, if you wanted to make it hot, you could put and cayenne then, in there. And then you, oh, the weirdest fucking thing, you took fucking Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, Worcestershire And sauce. fucking sprinkled that in there and then mixed it. Give it, it that fucking, umami. It was great. Absolutely <laughs> great. It is good. It was like something you'd have at the bar. Kind oh, because it's like salt, there. like a salty, savory. Yeah, it's yeah. good with like if you're drinking beer. Right, right, real good with alcohol. Yeah, somebody saw, like people are talking about Magnums. I just thought I saw a commercial, probably like a year or two ago, 
that they had started selling them in the U.S. And I was, like, really excited because I remember, like, really liking them when I was in the U.K. And they're really, really good. And I kind of feel like we didn't have them before now. But, yeah, they were super good. Um, yeah, Sandra says Magnum Ice is yummy. It, Dove makes Magnum. Do they? Because, honestly, like, Dove, all their shit is, like, really good. They have those, like, bags of... They're kind of, like... They're just, like, solid... You know, milk chocolate, they have solid dark chocolate, but they're like little squares, but they're like really good. They're like really silky. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those are like really good. But um, I wanted to say something else. Uh, not porn eggs. I usually went with a Choco Taco. Those were good too. Honestly, if I was going to get some from the ice cream truck, and this is like a long time ago, I would usually get Nutty Buddy. And I'm, I think they still sell those. There's another name for them, too. Uh, what's the other name for them? Shit, I can't remember now. Mm. But it's just, it's an ice cream cone with ice cream, but it has, like, hard chocolate nuts, but then it has hard chocolate at the bottom of the ice cream cone. I don't is, know that one. Like, to keep it from leaking out the bottom. I don't remember that one. The fuck is the name of that? I don't know. But, yeah, I would usually get those. Because, like I said, I like, if I'm going to get, know, like, ice cream and shit, much, I'm going to get nuts in it. I don't remember much about those little ice creams from the 70s. That's pretty much all I would get. Or I would get like the ones that looked like a Mickey Mouse face. Oh, uh, I remember those. those Although didn't most taste of them good though. Well, like I said, I wasn't in a Bomb Pops. Yeah. I didn't like the push-ups. I liked those. The I didn't sherbet? like yeah. yeah, I don't I don't like fruity ice cream. Yeah. Usually. Except like I said, the one exception is uh the Indian restaurant here in Lake Mary that drumstick. we go to. Is it a drumstick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drumstick. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like I said it's something right, like yeah. chicken. That's right. Not a chicken name. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I, I could think of. I remember those. They were wrapped in paper. Yeah, yeah. You, you pulled the paper top off, and then you you, you peeled it. It was like uh-huh. wax paper. To, as you ate it, you had to peel the outer yeah, yeah, wrapping yeah. down. I remember and those. then there's they like were a, good. they were really good. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, they were good. I like those a lot. And the, and the cone on it was real crispy and crunchy and real mm-hmm. chewy. I remember. And those. it had like a solid thing of chocolate at the bottom that kept the ice cream from leaking out. I don't remember that. Which, like I said, did. very very clever. Yeah. Because it kept like the ice when the ice cream started to melt. It wouldn't leak out the bottom because it had that solid plug of like chocolate at the bottom that was solidified, which was a good idea. But um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, the only fruity, I don't like sherbet really. The only fruity ice cream I've ever liked is that Indian restaurant that we go to in Lake Mary, Memories of India, that makes their own mango ice cream. Yeah. Which is delicious, even though I don't really, I'm not a big mango fan. Yeah. I don't really like mangoes that they taste perfumey, but their mango ice cream is amazing. Yeah. It's good. it's, a, it's amazing tasting. It doesn't taste like mangoes it's to me. It's some kind of mix that they put in that machine and put cream in there and it comes out. It's, and it's not like soft serve, it's ice cream. Yeah. And it's bright orange. Yeah. It's really good. Well, the way Indians make ice cream isn't like ours. It has a lot more ice in it. It's kind of more like a gelato in a certain way yeah it's not as creamy i don't think it's good though it's it's their own way of doing it grandther's hammer says how come the bubble gum in bubble gum ice cream was like chewing on pebbles i don't remember honestly i, remember. I wouldn't know because i have never ever gotten bubble the gum bubble ice cream in my whole entire life because that sounds he's, fucking disgusting yeah he's talking about real retro fucking Baskin Remember, Robbins. Yeah, when you used flavors. to go to... Yeah, we in our mall, we used to have yeah. a Baskin Robbins, and you. I never got that flavor there because that sounded the grossest I had it. I had it. It was good. It wasn't real bubble gum, I don't think. It was meant to be a bubble gum you could swallow. You couldn't chew it and blow bubbles with it. Um, there was a uh, Carvel, and Carvel's ice cream was kind of even lower budget and cheaper than the old Baskin Robbins. New Baskin Robbins is nowhere near as bad as it used to be. There was something about... Ice cream has moved up a bit since the 70s. They had some funky ass ice cream. They did. I, I remember how <laughs> how artificially how artificial tasting Carvels used to taste. They had a whole bunch of fucking fruit flavors. I loved them as a kid, but looking back on them, that shit was bright blue ice cream and bright red ice cream. And they had kind of a funny taste and I remember that adults wouldn't eat it. They're like, no, nah, that's terrible. <laughs> but and as a kid, even they, they knew back yeah, then. Yeah, they're like, nah, not Carvel's. <laughs> Carvel's kind of had a weird artificial flavor to it. 
Uh, I think I remember one guy saying, like, ah, you can taste the dye in that. Sometimes you could. Yeah, Sometimes I couldn't could. as a kid. But as a kid, you're kind of, like, tolerant to stuff. And there was something about the texture. I don't remember if you guys remember Carvel's from the 70s. It was weird. It's always getting weird shit like blueberry ice cream and stuff. I mostly remember Carvel because I don't think we had a Carvel store where I grew up. But you um, you saw the ads for, like, yeah. the ice cream cakes. Yeah. For people's birthdays. Those and didn't stuff. taste all that good either. I, I never that. had one. I love ice cream cake, but I never had one from Carvel. Though. It's probably better than like it was. Like Fudgy the Whale and all that. It's probably a lot better than it was. I mean, people's people's tolerance is not what it used yeah, to be. Yeah, you can't really you compete can't with, with shitty shit. crap anymore like you used to be able to. I do remember old Baskin Robbins from the 70s, though, man. Is fucking my, one of my, there were two of my favorite flavors that they fucking made was black licorice. Man, that shit was good. And they had that during Halloween, and then they and then they had the pumpkin one, for for Thanksgiving, Ooh. pumpkin ice cream. Pumpkin ice cream. Well, it was pumpkin pie ice cream. Oh yeah, pumpkin see now that's cream. something I could get behind. It was fucking great. <clears throat> I'm sure they probably sell that nowadays because they have pumpkin spice everything. Yeah. Now. And I'm sure I bet even Publix has a pumpkin pie ice cream around oh, things, yeah, around have. Halloween or Thanksgiving. Yeah. That probably has like bits of like uh, crust, black like pie li- crust in it. Black licorice ice cream was jet black. I mean, that sounds nasty. Uh, it was jet black, high gloss <laughs> jet black. It looked like obsidian. It looked like fucking. No, it looked like Coke. Have you ever seen Coke? Yeah. Which is a piece of coal that's shiny. Yeah, yeah. Like it's almost an obsidian color. Like it, it looked like Coke, and that's how fucking black and glistening it looked. And it would make all your inside of your mouth black. It tastes great, though. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had it in a long time. Yeah. But like, it was funny. It shouldn't be melting. All that black stuff would be melting. Adults would look at you sideways. And then the inside of your Adults mouth would be, like, oh, ah. be like, I wouldn't eat that. You know? like, kids well, shit, even they had taste back then. Yeah, even was, though they didn't know what I tasted the, good. I remember, it was, I remember it being delicious. I remember, like, we had a Baskin Robbins in our mall in Daytona when I was little. Hold on, Grandpa's in the line. No, Grandpa, Miss Anita. She says, "Let's be honest, though. Red velvet cake is disgusting." You shut up, Ray. Right? Go ahead yeah. and check off. Go ahead. I love red velvet cake. Red it's not my favorite, cake. but I, I, I actually do really like red yeah. velvet cake. Yeah. I've made red velvet cake yeah. many, on many occasions. That's tomato sauce to get it in there, giving it that. <laughs> you know that, right? That's tomato sauce in there. Well, you can yeah. make a really good um, yeah. chocolate cake well, with ketchup sauce. or tomato yeah. paste tomato in it. Tomato paste. It sounds fucked up, but it doesn't taste like tomato. No. It really doesn't. The flavor, it right just now. makes it like super moist and like, it gives it that like umami yeah. kind of flavor. There are a lot of, look like look it up. There are a lot of like chocolate cake recipes that have yeah. ketchup in, like or tomato paste in them. It sounds nasty, but it's actually like really, really good. Seriously. Take my word for it. No, I like red velvet. Like I said, it's not my favorite, but I'll eat it. They're going, red velvet does suck. Red velvet does not suck. <laughs> you're, just, you're just getting sucky red velvet cake. Good velvet, red velvet cake with fucking that Although white the thing cream about, frosting yeah, on there. Yeah, it has Man. to have like the white. Honestly, though, red like frosting. red velvet cake, I've never known like what flavor is it though exactly. Red flavor. It's kind I of think like. it's kind of chocolate. It's kind of like chocolate, but it's more yeah. like, it's not even like a malty chocolate. It's like a... I think it's chocolate. It is, but... I had to go back and look at it. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't it's... made one in a long time, and when I did make it, it was made it out of a mix. But you can fucking put tomato sauce in it, and it'll give it a richer color and a better texture. And um, no, no, y'all are tripping. You're, you're, you're not getting good red velvet cake. Well, I mean, some people just might not like it, you know, on on the other side of that. I'm not going to get all, like, fucking... you got to make the right frosting for it. It's got to be that white cream frosting, man. It's just like a good, dude. I mean, I'll eat pretty much any kind of cake yeah. or pie or anything. I'm not picky. And you but... eat it with a scoop of ice cream. Yeah. It's not, like I said, it's not my favorite. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what my favorite cake is. There's so many. But... You know, when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, every time it was my birthday when I was little and my mom or my grandma or whoever was making the cake would always ask what kind of cake I wanted. 
you know what kind of cake I wanted for like years and years? Marble. Yeah. Like, you know, marbled like vanilla and chocolate for whatever reason. That was like my favorite. Because I didn't like just plain chocolate cake because it was too much chocolate. I don't like it. But I was like, well, just plain vanilla seems too boring. So I liked like the combination of the two things. Even nowadays, I don't know. I'll eat chocolate cake, but it's not my first choice. I would rather vanilla or, you know, some, something like that. How long have we been? How long have we been rolling? Three hours and twenty. Okay, minutes. we need to start uh, thinking about shutting it down in a bit. We've been on for three hours. Xanada yeah. says New York style cheesecake over red velvet cake. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. New York style cheesecake. Cheesecake is, over anything. Really. Cheesecake pretty much wins over yeah. anything. Che- you can't compare cake with cheesecake. Yeah, they're two different things. Two different things. Do you remember like back, I don't know if they still sell this nowadays, but when I was uh, growing up, my grandma for Christmas would always go to Sam's and she would get, they used to sell like a cheesecake, but it was like six different flavors there were like two slices of cheesecake each. But yeah. it's like one of them was like had strawberries on it. One of them was like chocolate. That. Not, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. But it's like that's when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and man. What you doing? They, they, uh, you all of those were good. She, she wants to go back out. Yeah, actually, Sam sells those. Yeah, that's well, well that's like where a, she got it. Like that's variety, where she got it. Like yeah, variety. like a variety cheesecake. Yeah. yeah, we'd always get that at, like at Christmas, and that was like super good. Man, I love fucking cheesecake. All kind of cheesecake is good. Like I said, all kind of dessert is good. I have to stop myself from eating that shit (laughs) because it's like so good. Although I have to say one of my favorite things, and like I said, this is reminding me again of my grandma because another thing she used to buy me at Christmas time, because for some reason I'm super into these, is petty fours. I love petty fours of all kinds. Um, Not a big fan of the chocolate ones because I know they do... um, What's that store that comes in the mall every year? Uh, Hickory Farms. Oh, yeah. They do the store that's, uh, they do the box that's all chocolate ones. I'll eat those, but it's not my favorite. I would rather the vanilla cake ones with like the different flavored frosting in the middle and the different flavored frosting on the top. So, you know, like lemon, mint, whatever. So those are good. So she would buy me a big box of those every year for Christmas. And so a couple times, because Publix does them like in their bakery, but they only sell, I think they sell like four in a little clamshell and it's kind of expensive, but they're really good. I like those as well, even though it's essentially like cake, but it's just like bite size, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Camp guys going used to have a Hickory Farms in every mall when I was a kid. Yeah. Back when malls existed. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't, I don't think it was there all the time, but it would usually spring up around Christmas time. No, most small, most small, most malls had them forever. We, well, no, I'm just talking about our, our mall mall in Daytona, which was a fairly large mall, but it it would come, it it would uh, turn up like right after Halloween. Yeah. And then it would just sell shit for like Christmas, like it would Thanksgiving, Christmas, sausages and cakes and shit like that. In a lot of the big malls. Um, back during the fucking mall heyday, we're talking seventies and eighties. They they were, Hickory Farms was there all year round, and it was um, that's because back in that old culture, that was a gift. People would give that shit as gifts. Fucking well, yeah. sampler patterns of cheese and fucking cheese and crackers. And yeah, meat, I used to get my brother and my dad because they loved right. that shit. And it it made sense because you didn't know what to get this motherfucker. I don't know what to get this dude, or whatever. Everyone got to eat. It. Yeah, let's get him some food. <laughs> we'll get him some special this and that. No, that that'll shut that fucker up. I'll just put my name on it and get him a letter. That's that's what that was all about, and it worked. It was a, it was a good gift shop, and I've eaten a lot of stuff out of there over the years. Yeah, I have too. And it was all good. It was all good. I even liked all the sausages and sausage like and cheese, cheese and stuff. And crackers. Yeah. And you couldn't go wrong because you're giving somebody a gift and you don't know what to get them and you eat that. I mean, as long as they're not a vegetarian. (laughs) Right, yeah. Or a vegan or something. They didn't exist back in those days. Well, and like I said, (laughs) if they were a dude, you could buy them a big box of like sausages and cheese and they'd be like, they'd be all about it. Yeah. Laying up in the bed with a beer, fucking cutting that shit off with a knife and eating it like that and getting fat and that's just what you did. 
dipping it in the mustard. Mm-hmm. It came in mustard. Well, yeah. yeah. And like I said, and then they had like desserty ones too, because like I said, they had yeah. kind of, um, you know, they had the petty fours. Yeah. And my grandma would get me a box of those every year, and I was super excited about it because I fucking love petty. And fours. had that round thing, and you open it up and have all those cheeses. Yeah. Remember that? And they're, they're, and they're wrapped in fucking foil. Yeah. Each one of them like a block of cheese. Process. I also liked those. Yeah, you eat, but you put that on crackers with the meat. Yeah, it was great. It'd have like about eight different flavors of cheese in it. Like I said, as long as you're not a vegan. Yeah, you couldn't couldn't go wrong with that gift as long as that person ate meat. As I said, and everyone... Like in, back in the days, if you were a vegan, everyone man, they looked like you were fucking crazy. Vegan what? Vegetarian? Fuck out of here. Well, in the this 80s, in the 80s, nobody knew what a vegan was. Yeah, you know what that was. <laughs> some well, people, some people were vegetarians in the 80s. And they were looked at crazy. But people looked at you like you were yeah. some crazy, like, hippie yeah. tree hugger. Yeah. Which is so funny. I don't even think but, they associated it with that. They thought you were in some kind of a cult. <laughs> What are you in one of them weird? You, you a Scientologist? Were you in one of them, you're in one of them sex cults? You don't eat meat? What's were you the a Jesus you? freak? <laughs> they would think that you were a Jesus freak. <laughs> Which I, I don't think people know what a Jesus freak anymore. Some of these youngsters. Go watch Mandy. That's what Jesus freaks were. <laughs> Camp Guy says, I think Hickory Farms is mostly a catalog mail order now. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I kind of feel like in our mall, they didn't have a storefront, they would set up a kiosk in the middle. And it was usually like right after, you know, like after back to school or after Halloween, whenever they started doing like holiday shit, because that was when they made all their sales and then they would disappear. Big malls. When I was a kid, you'd have that Hickory Farms. That bitch would be open all year round. And right across from it, open all year round, would be C's Candies. You'd go in there and get some fucking boxes of candy. Remember that? I don't think we had one of those you here. You had one of those? No. Oh yeah, we had C's candy too. We had like candy stores, but we didn't have we didn't have that one. And well, the thing is, it was it was a candy store, but it was a gift store. You couldn't go in there and get a piece of candy and eat it and walk out. It was going to be boxes, gift boxes of candy. Yeah. The only thing that C's candy had that you could buy and walk out with these candy canes, flavored candy canes, different flavors. Remember those? Yeah. They had them in the little glass jars. But they didn't really have anything small that was ready to eat. Maybe a couple little things up near the register. It was, it was for gifts. Which, like I said, Thought it was. seems like, well, that's why like food. As long as somebody's not a vegan or a vegetarian or something, yeah. food is always a good gift, uh, because everybody got to eat. Um, you know, so it's it good to give people like cocoa or coffee or something like that, because pretty much everybody drinks coffee, right? Except Mormons. Thing is, is that you didn't want to give the fucking. Sees candy to a fucking girlfriend. They were trying to sell it. Here, give this to your girlfriend. She'd fucking slap you in the face, man, getting that girl fat. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, fuck, that motherfucker's trying to get me fat. Uh, well, I do feel like that's better than buying them the... Some diet raids. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. There's a pack of eggs. So, uh, all right. <laughs> so, so let's do like a whole, like uh, a chart of shit yeah. not to buy your girlfriend. Don't buy your girlfriend. A well, price like, price. right. Well, okay. So I kind of feel like fattening shit is maybe in the middle of that. Yeah. Below that, you don't want to get them like shit that just implies it's like. Lingerie. Firm. Well. Because then you're like. <laughs> I was going to say. just going to fuck. Don't go to, the, don't go to the gas station yeah. and buy them like the rose that's like, or the underwear that's like folded into like a rose or whatever. Do they still Younger sell those? Roses? No, I don't Do know. Do they never, still sell never those? Never even heard of that. At gas stations. Never even heard of that. Do you know what? Well, at gas <laughs> stations. folded into a rose. Look, the 7-Eleven that was behind my grandma's. That's a hooker gift. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what a, I'm saying. That's a crack whore gift. At the 7-Eleven that was behind my grandma's house. Um, I don't know if it was underwear, but they did have like these roses that were kind of like... I don't know. And then maybe it was kind of like had kind of like a garter kind of situation happening on it. And they were super cheap. They were like a buck or two. And it was like right by the counter. So you're up there buying your cigarettes and booze and, you know, snacks or whatever. You're just like, oh, yeah, let me get one of these for my girlfriend. <laughs> you're like white trash, toothless girlfriend that's like yeah. lives here or whatever. So it's like, yeah, don't get one of those. Um, I kind of feel like buying shit like unless she specifically asked for it. Um, don't buy your girlfriend or wife like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. No or, tools. Or an iron. Yeah, yeah. Or something. It's like, no unless, tools. like I said, unless they specifically ask, like they super want one, uh, I would not advise that. 
Um, I kind of feel like buying them something fattening, maybe in the middle of that. I don't know. Mm. Maybe in the middle, but I don't know. Lingerie, probably also not a real big, because that's more a gift for you, isn't it? Yeah. Don't yeah. get a girlfriend lingerie. It's not really a gift for her. No. <laughs> Just a pro tip. Yeah. You can buy it. Just don't give it as a gift. Yeah. I mean, you can just yeah. buy it. It's like, hey, I saw this and I thought of you. Yeah. yeah so we're going to we going down tonight. Man. Yeah. It's going to look that's, good on Well, you. that's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, don't buy it for, like, a birthday. Like, uh, hey, it's a gift for you. And she's like, no, this no, is a gift, gift for, for you. you. Right, yeah. Really. Um, isn't it? Yeah. Not really for me. <laughs> All right, Jenny. I'm getting tired. Let's go ahead and shut this fucking show down. Oh, and Tammy says no exercise equipment. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that's yeah. another thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. might be taken uh, yeah. really the wrong way. Right. Here, you're getting kind of fat. I could buy, I buy yeah. you a stationary bike. Get on this fucking bike, you fat <laughs> bitch. <laughs> getting fat. Oh, my God. Yeah. That sounds like some shit you would do. <laughs> yeah, I'd, do that. I'd be open about it, though. Here, I'm going to get this big old <laughs> ride smack fat off. God damn. <laughs> The fuck is happening to you? <laughs> I mean, we're laughing. We've been together a long time. I know, I know, I know your shtick. I know your shtick at this point. <laughs> Burn that shit off, God damn. <laughs> the funk that's in you, yeah. Russ. You're like as big as a fucking yeah. house at this point. Mm. <laughs> oh my god! All right, shut it down. I'm getting, I'm getting tired. Oh my god! Hankster says, uh, laughing my ass off again. I'm here as soon as you're leaving. Sorry. Oh man, come on. And, like, seriously, though, we've been here for, like, three and a half hours. We've been here hours. for three and a half hours, we're man. We're so drunk we're at this point. And tired, man. We were uh, we were sleepy when we started the show. Well, yeah, because I woke up at, like, yeah. 5.30 this morning. Yeah, I'm going to lay up in the bed. We're going to lay up in the bed. I was going to lay up in the bed. Tomorrow, we don't have to work t- tomorrow, do we? Or I, yeah. We don't, have to, we don't have to do the show tomorrow. Maybe yeah, I'll there's, no, there's no live stream tomorrow. I mean, there's, I still have to work because yeah, I, work, there's every, no live I work every day. But you we don't can have take to... off the day if you want. I don't know shit. I can't, though. I have okay. too much shit i got to do. Okay. I can't ever take a day off. You don't understand. I, just, I have too much shit I gotta do. I didn't get to ride today. I know. I thought you told me you were gonna go ride Man, today. Man, there was so much shit I was fucking doing. Fucking watching you... shit, watching shit on YouTube, fucking catching up with people. Social media dominates everything. Well, check out of that shit. I know. I gotta fucking break away from that. See, that's why I don't ever go on Facebook. Yeah. I go there one time I'll a day. I start talking and I can't stop talking. I go on there one time a day and just check my shit, and I'm just like, "Do I need to answer yeah. this right now?" Nope. Well, then, I got I got shit I gotta do. Yeah. And I don't mean to be like offensive to anybody, but I got shit I gotta do. Just saying. All right, Jenny, shut it down, man. We've been we've been doing the show. All right. I'm sorry, Hankster. Yeah. But seriously. No, All right. So we will be back on Friday night. Somebody asked us what our next uh, true crime case was going to be. Friday night, we're going to do a show about. And I'm kind of glad this got picked in the poll. We're going to do a, a thing about the Ken McElroy murder, which I don't want to go too much into that. But this is like, I wrote about it in one of my books. It's a good case. One of those cases where dude gets murdered by someone or someone's in a town and nobody really wants to talk about it because uh, dude was a douche. So, you know. I think I remember this story. Yeah, everyone's just like, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know who could have yeah. shot that dude. Hmm. I remember that. I don't remember, know. Didn't I know see this. a goddamn thing. This is going to be a good show. So, <laughs> I know this case. <laughs> so, yeah. We're going to talk about that on Friday night. So, come by Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will do another show. Hopefully, we won't get quite as drunk, so we'll know what we're talking about. we got to re- we got to fucking go buy some more booze. We do. We're we cleared there. the place out. Did we? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. One. That was the last that's of the booze. It. That's it. Well, at least we're not wasting anything. Yeah. Well, let's let's that's say that. It. All right. So we will see you guys Friday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come back, and we'll be talking about some true crime shit. Thank everybody. Thanks everybody for dropping by. Thanks for super chats. Thanks for being cool in the comments, like you always are. And we'll see you guys on Friday. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>